Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode of Blown for Good. Um, and we're gonna do, we're gonna bring in um, Mike. And we're Hello. gonna bring in Claire. Hello. Oh, and, look um, at you. You did the sequence right and everything. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah. Um, good, okay. good work. Let's see. Let's make sure that we're live. I have a little bit of a echo. I'm just going to make sure that I'm good here. Oh, my God. We're good, though. I think we're good. <laughs> no, I'm good. It's Never all good a dull now. moment over here on stream. Yeah, well, right? actually, there is a dull moment that starts out dull. Yeah. Well, like, we just. Well, let me make sure the sound people are showing up. Um, let's nice. see. Oh, there we go. That was uh, it. Oh, look my at mic. That. That... Yeah, you oh, got to have yeah. your mic within, you know, the same time zone, and then probably we'll hear you good. Yeah, Aaron was stressing out wherever he is in the inter interwebs world. He's like, "Your mic, your mic." <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're like, we know. Oh, look. Mitch is here. Oh, yay. Goldie's here. Hey, I buddy. love you, Goldie. Liz Ferris. Look at all these people. Oh, We've got, like, yay. People here. Yeah. From a poet, Brian Lucas is here. We got someone from Canada. <sighs> oh, nice. Write a cram on mock, please. I will. I got it, Mitch. <laughs> Apostate <laughs> Alex is here. Oh, really? Well, yep. that's appropriate. Oh, as, uh, Jeff what Hawkins gonna... is here. I was going to say that's appropriate that Apostate Alex is here because we're going to take another one of his scoops mm -hmm. to start this episode with. Yep. The, <clears throat> the news that apparently Mr. Miskovich is going to be going to the IES event in the UK on the 3rd and 4th of November. Ooh, he's crawling out of his hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, as I told Tony, there is only one place where I think that he would be willing to go and sort of re-announce himself on the world stage, yep. at, at least the Scientology world stage. <laughs> which and is that... very, which is more like a town or, a, you know, a village at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like the world doormat. It's like standing <laughs> on the doormat, not really the stage. But yes, the, the UK is sort of unique. Um, I don't think he's going to show up to any um, ideal org openings where he has to be out on the street or go into an airport that he doesn't know. Uh, the UK is has got this pretty good setup of St. Hill is uh, a fully enclosed property, sort of like the gold base with a fence around it and a lot of security. So you can't really get in and out of there easily. And he can fly into Farnborough Airport, which is where the private jets land near St. Hill. And Farnborough is one of those airports where you can drive the vehicle up to the plane. And you step out of the plane, off the, the steps of the plane, directly into a vehicle. Hmm. So... There's no access to him, and he doesn't have to sit in, you know, L.A. traffic where some process server might <laughs> run up behind him and stop him on the way to the shrine. He doesn't have to get in and out of anything other than a plane at the L.A. at the U.S. end, the plane arriving in the U.K. into a vehicle and then into St. Hill, and he'll never set foot outside of St. Hill again until he goes back to Farnborough or wherever, I assume Farnborough, to get back on Tom Cruise's plane and fly back to wherever he flies back to. Nice. So, yeah, God, God forbid he'd have to confront and shatter any of us mere mortals. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> confront and shatter is a... a term that has come to have absolutely no meaning in Scientology. Yes, exactly. Like it, it never really did, but at least back in back in the day, there were people that sort of went out into the world and tried to stand up for Scientology in some fashion or another. You know, I did it for a long time. Yeah. Heba did it. A bunch of other people did it. Nowadays, there's nobody except Monique. 
the yeah. non-Scientologist The non-Scientologist. Right. What other billion dollar organization has no public re relations person who's even willing to say hello? Right. <laughs> right. Anyway, I know I'm dominating this conversation. No, already, no, it's like okay. We're, do, we're, we we're haven't just... done a live with you in so yes. so long that we're like, wow, let's we're let like, Mike yay, talk for a little Mike bit. Mike is here. I haven't, I haven't really been very lively for a while. So I'm back to feeling lively again. So Amazing. here I am being live. We'll, nice. we'll, we'll be lively with you anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I was going to um, sort of throw out this idea that, that we had mentioned in our last um, Aftermath Foundation board meeting, mm -hmm. which was... Um, you know, if they're going to hold an IAS event to fundraise for Scientology, maybe we should coincidentally hold a fundraiser for the aftermath to, you know, recognize that this is a day of fundraising. Yes. That's, I love it. What... I love the idea. Yes. It's a great idea. And I think also we can encourage people. And I, and I thought of a great idea is we can make the fundraiser um, we can call it the IAS event live stream SPTV coverage. <laughs> so IAS as in International Association of Former Scientologists. Yeah. Of, so, but of, of special people. Of yes, special people. There you go. Yes. Like the and IASP. That, well, we can just call it S. We'll just say IAS event SPTV coverage and live stream. And then some people might not even go because they think they're just, oh, I can just watch it on YouTube. Yeah, we'll have but, more uh, Scientologists <laughs> present for our live stream than, than we'll be at the actual IES event. <laughs> and now they'll have to send out a special email to everybody to let them know, Telling do them not, not look. Yeah, do not yeah. watch this on uh, on uh, YouTube. That's yeah. not where the event's going to be. And then people are going to be like, well, what's on YouTube then that we're not supposed to go look at? Uh, yeah, there'll be a ban. <laughs> do be not a... go on YouTube on this day. <laughs> exactly. Ah. Oh, I like that. That's a, oh, that's a good it. plan. Yes, yes, it's amazing. I think so. I think you know, it is there, a good plan. There is uh, why we, you know, I sort of um, railroaded this into let's talk about the IES just because Apostate Alex had brought that up and then Tony Ortega wrote an article about it and then Aaron did a video and then, you know, we don't want to miss out on talking about this. But there is a lot of other stuff about the IES that I don't know is like really well known and I think it should be made known or it should be made as widely known as possible. And some and some humorous and somewhat insane anecdotes from previous IAS events, which I thought might be fun to, to have a chat about too. Yeah. But one thing I, I wanted to make clear from the outset, I was a part of the formation of the IAS with... Lyman Spurlock and uh, Carl Helt, who is still in the Sea Org in Europe, um, and a lawyer by the name of Jacob Aravad, who was a Danish lawyer who put forth the idea that there is this special class of organization in Europe called a membership association. And I'm not going to go into all sorts of details about this, but he said, we should form this because it's like nobody can really get any access to it. <laughs> it's like, and at the time, the IRS was heavily, heavily involved in trying to get uh, a collect on their assessments and they were freezing bank accounts and issuing all sorts of, of, threats and stuff. And the idea was we have to keep money out of the hands or the potential hands of the IRS. So all money made by every Scientology organization outside of the U.S. has to stop being sent into the United States where it could be theoretically grabbed by the IRS. Mm. So that was originally why the IAS was set up in Cyprus, to be exact. Hmm. Uh, that's where it was located. 
Uh, Maureen Brigatti and a couple of other people were sent to Cyprus to open bank accounts and set up a little office there. And the money from all of the European orgs started being channeled into the IAS bank accounts that were outside of the control of the IRS. A glorious offshore account. Exactly. Yeah. But the big lie is that the IAS was founded to be the war chest for Scientology's battles. And this lie exists that the first big victory of the IAS was in Portland. Mm. There was no money from the IAS that went to Portland. Hmm. It was all it, that was completely opposite to what the purpose of the structure of the IAS originally was, hmm. which was to keep money outside the U.S. It wasn't going to be brought in to fight legal battles. No way. In fact, that would be absolutely the last thing getting that money entangled in any legal case or lawyers or whatever. So this, this idea that the, the great history of the IS began with the Portland crusade is, is completely made up. It's just wow. a figment of Dave's imagination that it's sounded a, good. It's just a narrative that he wants to tell. Yeah. And it's been, now it's become like history. Like this is a, a actual history of Scientology. Not even close. It's it's not the history of Scientology. In fact, up until the time that the IRS granted the IAS tax exempt status, because the IAS and IAS administrations and the fundraising of the IAS was all deemed to fall, sort of fall under the umbrella of Scientology. So the IAS became tax exempt. And at that point, that's when the heavy, you've got to donate to the IAS. Before that, it was a, a, a membership organization. You right. had an annual or six month membership and the money from the orgs went to the IAS. But that all changed and then it became, you know, the history got created that this is the guarantee that Scientology will always be around and all those catchphrases that they, that they use to get the whales to start handing over money. And right. it was uh, like, I remember the very earliest IAS events where there was fundraising being done, which was primarily on the free winds during Maiden Voyage. That was the big deal IAS thing because Miscavige was there and people would get handed their bowling trophies. <laughs> and the, you know, the lower level guys got them from me or Heber or Guillaume or someone. And the big hitters got them from the master of ceremonies himself, if they were lucky. And Mr. Miskovich would show up and hand out the trophies to the big guys. Right. And that's still the routine that they use. I mean, it is, it is hammered into these poor suckers that hand over hundreds of thousands or millions of tens of millions of dollars, how incredibly important they are. And that if they give X amount, you know, they're up to gold, platinum, butt kisses, meritorious or whatever they, <laughs> whatever their names are. Um, I have one of those trophies. Yeah, I should nice. show everybody. I don't yeah. know if everybody's seen this, except it's so damn. I'm gonna heavy. switch it. I'm gonna switch it to Mike's view because I need to switch something else anyway. So I'm gonna put it to him. Okay. Can I? How do I do that? Actually, you just take us out. Perfect. Here I can okay. do it. Let me check this puppy out. Ah, platinum, meritorious, Richie and Amy Acanto. Akunto, amazing that's crazy that yes. how heavy is that thing mike like 40 About pounds 35 or 40 pounds wow that's crazy <laughs> it's like really heavy <laughs> but that's what they hand out unless you're tom cruise then you get a super special one yep do you oh. do you know what year the ias was formed 
Um, hold on, if I think about it. No I worries, if not. We 1982. Can... Okay. I think. Okay. That makes sense because I remember at an IES event when I was seven or eight years old at St. Hill. Yeah. So I think I was at probably the first IES event ever at St. Hill. And I, believe it or not, got um, autographs from Guillaume and Mark Yeager and Heber. <laughs> oh, Claire, I'll give you my autograph the next time I see you. Thank you. <laughs> so you'll have the full. Oh, man, there's so many great IAS event stories. Yes. Like, I, yeah. I just remembered another one when we were sitting here. The Originally, the IAS events, like the first IAS event was held in Toronto. Oh, wow. Actually. Okay. And the awards were given to non Scientologists. Wow. To like religious leaders who were allies. Oh, I and see. I think the third one was held in Lausanne. And oh, nice. I I didn't go to Toronto. I went, I think the second one was in Paris, and I went to Paris, but I didn't speak. Then I went to Lausanne, and I think that was the first IAS event that I spoke at. But that event was memorable for <laughs> Okay, the person, one of the people that won the IS Freedom Medal at that event was a guy from Colombia uh, or Venezuela. And now his name escapes me. But he was brought up on stage and it was all like a big da da. Um, and he was presented his award. And then after the event, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it came to light that this guy was a complete crook. Oh, yeah. He was like doing some sort of gold gold trading or something and ripping off all the Scientologists. And a whole bunch of people had sort of come up when they saw him on the stage and went, this, he ripped, us, blah, 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 blah. So it turns out that, that what they were saying was true. So in at like 11 o'clock at night, Miscavige, Norman Starkey, me, Guillaume, and Heber, and whoever else was there, maybe Ray Midoff, tracked this guy down in this hotel. And Miscavige took his medal back. <laughs> wow. And his name does not appear in any oh of the, gosh. like, the old What is Scientology book has the names of all the IAS Freedom Medal winners. Yeah. He's not in that. Even though he was in the event and was given the medal. Yeah. <laughs> David Miscavige rewriting Scientology history day by day. <laughs> well, but my, Mike, do you remember what happened? It, this was much, many years later. But do you remember when we shot the video for Lynn Irons? Oh, Yeah. So we shot a video for this guy. He was the medal winner and his name was Lynn Irons. And he happened to be the, wasn't he the father of a yes. in-base staff member? Not Georgiana. only any in-base staff member, he was the father of David Miscavige's personal steward. Yeah. Right. So we shot a whole video in Russia with this guy. And he had another guy named Bud that was sort of helping him do stuff and doing lectures with him and stuff yeah. like that. And um, I want to say the event video was done and edited. And we were basically, it was ready for the event. And it, the, and to be, <laughs> to be honest, that didn't happen that many times. I where, know. <laughs> like we would, we would be editing up to the day of the event. And, and yep. sometimes the tape would get couriered over at the last minute because all the editing facilities were in California and it would get, it would be brought over at the last second. So this video was in the can, edited, it was all good to go. And then somebody, I guess somebody got wind of it or something happened and it, um, it was it was revealed. I don't remember how we found out, but Dave found out that uh, good old Lynn there. Um, the video was um, him um, getting Scientology into Russia and all of the work he was doing in Russia to spread Scientology all around. And then um, 
uh, we found out that uh, good old Lynn was availing himself of the the <laughs> local services. Uh, s female services that you could get in Russia. Oopsies. And um, yeah, so we had to, we basically had to somehow salvage, and it was all about the video. That's really right. what it, it was just, we got it. We shot the video. The video's done. What are we going to do? So um, Dave ordered all of the footage to be gone through and to figure out who's in more, who's the second <laughs> Who the person second most... that's in most amount of the shots other than Lynn. And it was this guy, Bud, and his name was Bud Reichel. Reichel. And Bud Reichel, he became the Freedom Medal winner for that year because he was in more shots than anybody besides Lynn. And then I think they went and shot like a few things of him in the front of a, a, a course room or, you know, and do, doing a bunch of handing out some booklets or something like that. And they just spiced up the edit with him, changed the titles, changed the whole uh, interview. Oh, that was it. We did an interview with Bud for him to tell his story and how he'd been working on this for so many years and how it got to this. And he was the medal winner. And that was enough for me to go like, hmm, like this literally was all about Dave having a video that he could show people. It didn't really matter who did the work or what work was done. But um, so yeah, there's definitely, and then the last thing I wanted to say is when we did the Tom Cruise award in 2004 um there were already three medal winners for that year that we'd also already done all the videos for and shot and had them all ready and then out of nowhere dave was like uh we're we need to do a video about tom and then that i've done many i've told that story many times we might do a whole video just about that but as soon as tom was going to get a video they were trying to figure out well would we do tom last or will we do tom first or how do we do that and then dave just decided yeah we're not doing those other three people and the, they were just not medal winners anymore because tom was going to get it and if we were going to give the award to tom we didn't want anybody else to share the stage with him it just was going to be tom right that static is really bad yeah, I heard that too. Oh, I don't hear Sound anything. Check. It's you, Mark. Uh oh. Pretty sure. Oh well, that's a bummer. There you go. Um, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. take myself out. I'll join back in. You guys are good okay. to go. <laughs> okay, we'll just keep going. Alrighty. Yeah, th there's so many IES event and video stories we could go on for a week. Yeah. Like I. Because I was always directly involved with them because for whatever reason, I was the person that had to somehow figure out how the events were going to get done. And I remember Wendy Honor. Wendy Honor was uh, in Tasmania. Yeah. Uh, about as far away as you can get. And Larry Jacobs and the camera crew was sent there to film the video for Wendy Honor, the IES Freedom Medal winner. Yep. And she was supposedly opening all these groups and missions and, to you know, turning Tasmania into the first Scientology island in the world or something. And they get there and find there's nothing happening. Yep. They, there wasn't really a mission there weren't really any groups. It was just all a lot of BS. There was, there was nobody interested in Scientology whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. They were not getting... Mark, I, I would just say, there's so many stories about IES videos. We could go on for weeks, but I one that sticks in my mind is the Wendy Honor one, where Larry Jacobs and the camera crew were sent all the way to Tasmania to document her taking over the entire island and, and state of Tasmania with her groups and missions. And they got there and there was nothing. And so they had to go around and find buildings and locations and get people off the street to come in and sit at tables and chairs, pretending to be reading Scientology materials in order to pretend that there was this overwhelming interest. Well, the overwhelming interest in Scientology, even with all the fake stuff, didn't even look like anything significant. Yeah. Like they struggled so much to get anything that it was sort of, okay, we give, 
yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, I got it. You got 10 people in a room. Okay. Yeah. I know you've been working on that for five days. So <laughs> we, we don't have any more time. We'll just use that. Yeah. And that, I mean, there are videos like that for uh, like every year there were videos like that. These guys that were the big psych busters who'd closed down all these places. Mm, yeah. Not so much. Didn't really <laughs> happen. Maybe, maybe they got an article in the newspaper, but no, couldn't find most of the stuff that was being talked about. And this has been a problem since, since the very first days of presenting these awards and I think that the first bit, they didn't used to do videos. Videos started, uh, intro videos for IES Freedom Medal winners started like four or five years after the actual events got started. Mm. I don't remember when that was exactly, but. I'm going to say probably, it was during the 90s. Yeah, and it probably had to do with making it so that nobody had to get up on stage and give a speech of any kind. Well, oh, that's another thing. Oh, oh I was my just going to say, Mike. So, oh, so oh. for the events, I'll, I'll, I'll take over here. Is, am I? Is my audio good now? Yes. Yes. Good. Perfect. Um, we'll, we'll start giving you the like. Uh oh. If no, no. I, you. <laughs> I just set up Claire with a new mic setup, and I yeah. cannibalized oh, my stuff to to put, set her oh. up. Yep, so, it's your fault, Claire. So it's my no, fault. No, yeah, it was exactly. my fault. I was the one who did it, but I didn't think it would make a big deal. And then I realized, oh, I need to put that back the way I had it before. Um, no worries. Thank you, anyway, honey. I appreciate your help. It's all good. It's all good. Um, the, uh, the, it, up till the events, and the only reason that, that I know this in excruciating detail is for many, many years, I was over the pre-production department, which is over script writing, and it's over research and assembly. And those are the people that would feed the people that were writing scripts for these events. And so we would have to write, uh, Mike would have to write his speech. And in a lot of times, Mike would have to write other people's speeches as well, including mm -hmm. Dave's speech. And then he'd give that to Dave. And then Dave would yell at Mike for all of the pieces of, sh uh, of uh, turds that he turned over on the scripts. And then essentially, David Miscavige would, would punch those up or have somebody else punch them up, like a guy, what was the guy, the writer? Dan guy's Sherman. Name? Dan Sherman, have Dan it's Sherman punch up. Good old up. Sherman speak. And then give yes. it back to Dave, and then Dave would punch up what, what Sherman did, <laughs> and then he'd tell Mike, I had to redo the whole entire thing myself. And you're right. like, but everybody knew that Dan Sherman did it, but he never said, I had to have Dan Sherman fix it, and then I had to fix what Dan Sherman did. He would just say, I fixed everything. So when we would get to the event and somebody was going to get an award, uh, somebody would have to help that person write their speech because otherwise they'd say insane things that David Miscavige would be like, uh, you, no way you're saying that. So those speeches, and sometimes these people um, – couldn't speak that great of English or they couldn't speak any English. And then we had to get a translator and then the translator had to go on the stage. It was just a giant, giant nightmare. And, and usually it would be the subject of great pain and agony for all of us that the, these speeches would have to get done. And now Mike would be the one who would usually he, uh, you would mainly be like that, um, the the run interference with that person right because dave's not oh, talking yeah. to you. dave's not talking oh, no. to he, he any of these people directly peons. yeah no 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 this was and and what would happen is the usually the the orders with respect to those people's speeches were that they haven't acknowledged cob adequately that they're too long mm -hmm. And that they um, aren't forwarding whatever the message was. Like if if it was ideal orgs were the big deal at the moment, they had to to talk about how amazing the ideal orgs were, even if it had nothing to do with them. They had to fit into the overall message of the event. So they'd be effectively they would be told what they were supposed to say and only authorized to say specifically, they all had to be on a teleprompter. 
Like, yeah. there were guys that were like, didn't want to do a teleprompter because they didn't know how to do it and they were sort of scared of it and they wanted to have their little piece of paper. They were allowed to have their piece of paper if they insisted, but they had to have the teleprompter. <laughs> yes. And you, so, know what's you know what's really funny is that you said that thing about um, they had to thank COB. That became sort of for everything in all of Scientology to the point where if you went to a flag graduation and you completed yes. a course and you came up sta on stage and did a, and, and gave it like a little success story or something, the end of your success story was, and I just, none of this would have been possible without Mr. Miscavige, COBRTC, and of course to L. Ron Hubbard. And you, if you listen to any speech that anyone ever does on a Scientology stage, they will first thank David Miscavige, and maybe sometimes they would also thank LRH. But no matter what, they are thanking David Miscavige, chairman of the board, Religious Technology Center, for everything he does, and it's it's baked in to every single speech. Mike, you have? Do we still have those event videos? We had yes. those for. A, you still yes. have some the videos, oh, the yeah, actual yeah, yeah. videos. Yeah. I was thinking at a certain point we could do a super cut, like we could edit one down and chop it up and then just do a reaction. We couldn't do a reaction video to a whole event because they're two hours long. But if right. we but if we chopped out chopped out all the fluff and maybe did a super cut of it and then we could just rip through it and we could comment, it still would take forever. We might I would love to do it though, because you could see and it would be a really good example if we could do it before this IS event, it would be amazing. But the amount of just flat out lies that are in mm -hmm. these videos, like, oh, I know they were playing um, Aaron Smith Levin. And I want to say it was either Mitch or Rachel or um, it was Rachel and Mitch that did a video and they played one of these videos about how many they're reaching this and they're doing that. Oh, and yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But it rolling said they had. Yeah, it said they had millions of groups and missions in this thing, <laughs> millions. And I was wow. like, whoa. And th I mean, these are from 2017 or 2018. These are more recent things, but they've only shrunk since we left. There's yeah. there, there hasn't got they have not had one statistic in Scientology go up since the, the early 2000s really since the 2000s and well, even since 1996 the stats have been square going. square footage of owned buildings has gone up <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, empty dollars buildings in I mean, reserve uh tax exempt dollars that the irs hasn't audited has gone up <laughs> but they literally they haven't gotten more people they haven't the set up more up families has gone up has, yeah, that's yeah. true, but that's yeah. not a stat they keep. Some upstats. <laughs> but either number way, of, number of channels on SPTV has definitely skyrocketed. <laughs> yep, that's gone up. Yeah, boom. <laughs> Inches of N Theta Media. That's gone up. <laughs> yeah, number of people convicted of of uh, crimes. Yes, that Scientology helped up. cover up. That's gone up. <laughs> yep, definitely. The things so, yeah, I, there's think lots of... I can just keep going. I can do my own Rolling Thunder here, Mark. <laughs> maybe, Highest maybe ever. Maybe we should do that. We'll compile all of the stats for the for our IAS fundraiser. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. we should. We could Good do idea, awards, man. too. We could do yes. awards, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. We could do a whole award show. We could do a whole IAS event. Yeah, there you go. I've got some oh, trophies. Back in event I've, mode. I've i got to get back in event trophies. mode, Mike. <laughs> got to get back in event mode. Oh, Can you imagine, by the way, I was you were just reminding me when we were talking that remember David Miscavige put together the whole blooper reel mm. of all the speakers. Could you imagine if that ever got leaked? Oh my God. Like well, that Ray was, Midoff, well, what Ray about Midoff the is, other? Yeah. There were, there were deliberately shot goofball reels on the free wins. Well, I was yes. going to say there was a guy that went to the RPF for one of those videos because he was the, he was the shipping manager, golden era productions. And somebody gave him a tape and they said, you got to get this to the free winds. And he took the tape. It was like a, you know, beta, whatever they call beta SP or digital beta or whatever it was back in the day. And um, he took it to the airport. And this is before this was pre 9-11. And he went to the gate 
and he gave somebody who was on a flight to <laughs> Miami or somewhere, he gave them the tape and then somebody in Miami could grab the tape and then gave it to another person that was flying to the free winds, was flying to Curacao or whatever. So this tape went through two total strangers, just, hey, do you mind uh, taking this and somebody will pick it up on the other end? And this is also before the days of do not accept anything from anyone that's <laughs> right. not your luggage, you know, whatever they said. The um, and then this this video was an edit of all of this footage that they had shot at the free winds while we were setting up for the the week of events that was going there of david miscavige and guillaume doing work. in the engine room david miscavige scrubbing. doing actual work like scrubbing the decks and down in, in the engine room and that sort of stuff because that was such a joke yeah mm. like this was this was the joke was yep. that they all of us it was me it was ray it was norman that was guillaume and dave himself doing all these weird they'd things. be cleaning the cabins and they'd be <laughs> uh, scrubbing the engine room and they'd be cooking the food and they'd all be doing this all day long and then at the end of the event somebody they're like looking or at the end of the video near the end they're looking at their watches and they run to their room and they put on their their, yeah, their put tuxedo on the and, and they run on down the hallway and, and like, then that's the way the event would open. Dave would literally be running down the hallway to get to where the starlight was, and then they would turn the lights on and he would walk out on stage. And that That's was the right. gag. That video was the video that this guy had couriered with these random people, just given to random people and have brought there. And and um, I think it was one of those things like, it was so gonna not make the event that when it made it, Dave was like, what, what happened? And he'd be like, oh yeah, we got it here, da 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 And it was like, well, who brought it? And it was like, oh, um, it was sent by gold. And it was like, and, and that's, if you do that, like if Dave said, who brought it? And you say, it was sent by gold. That's just, you're now, you're in a world yeah, of yeah. terror. Because mm -hmm. he, yeah. said, he said, that's not, I didn't ask who sent it. I asked who brought it. And then you go yeah. like, oh, well, some rando on a plane in Miami brought it. And then a rando <laughs> on a plane from Curacao brought it. And that's and Ryan Greaves was like, off with your head. Um, yep. But um, there was another one. Um, what was the other one we did, Mike? Wasn't there one where, um, gosh, I'm blinking now. Well, over the years, we did many, many of these things. It became a thing that the, 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 the free wins events are attended by only the very, very highest level Scientology, like um, civilian Scientologists in the world. So yeah. you, and only I don't 250 think, of them. Yeah, 250, that's, that's another telling statistic because the Starlight Cabaret, which is where they do this event, it only fits a little over 200 people in that place. And once you put the event crew and uh, anybody else in there, it's full. And they wouldn't even fill that room. A lot of times they would have the Sea Org members that worked on the free winds mm -hmm. would dress up to fill out that room. And but in order to get into that event, you had to I want to say you'd had to have given them millions of dollars over the year to get into that event. Yeah, like, for sure. And, and, and well, they had to be had, OT8 to begin with. I was just yes. going to say, and you also had to either be OT8, and I think if your wife was like OT7 or something like that, and you both given $10 million, then your wife could come too. But um, but otherwise... Or, or you had, if you're a David Miscavige's chiropractor, you know, things like right. that. Or his <laughs> or his hair or his hairstylist, or yeah. his yeah. chef, or his... Or the person driving the yacht that they're that's <laughs> sailing around behind the feet uh, the free winds that he's he's actually scuba staying on. Yes. Oh, and his scuba instructor. Oh, oh my God, what was I the name of that guy? The scuba those. instructor, yeah, Roland. Uh, Roland. Roland. Yeah. Roland. Yes. Oh my oh. gosh. Nice yeah. guy. Nice. Yeah. He was a nice guy. But um, so but so those guys became sort of Dave made this thing like if you give enough money and you're active and you're one of the top dog Scientologists, one of the whales. So that somebody mentioned in the comments, what's a whale? A whale is somebody that Scientology can suck millions of dollars out of on a regular basis over a long period of time. That's not a Scientology term, by the way. No, that's whale like a Vegas. It's a Vegas. It's term. a Vegas term for yeah. the, the big catches. High rollers. That's what it is. The big yeah. catch. The guy that's gonna that's gonna lay down millions of dollars on the tables in Vegas or 
the tables in front of the IAS ridges. Yes. Except in sci in Scientology, in the world of Scientology, that guy's not getting his room comped or free buffets <laughs> or uh, a couple of uh, a couple of uh, or ladies open, of the night sent up or to his open room. Bar you're not or getting none of that. yeah, you're not getting any of the perks a normal whale gets. You're just getting harpooned on a regular basis. That's the only <laughs> thing that's happening yeah. in Scientology. <laughs> Until well, the day you, you get die. handed one of those bowling trophies. There you well, go. yeah, but those also the the bigger the trophy, the more millions you've donated. Oh yeah, um, that is probably you're right, Mike. That may be the only perk you get is you get a trophy. That that's right. the one thing you don't actually. There's not a transactional. Do they have to pay for the shipping to wherever they live? I want. Okay, <laughs> no idea. I doubt. Uh, <laughs> that's but, a great but, question. But what they really do get is status. And yes. Status for public Scientologists is the most coveted thing in Scientology. Whether that be uh, a certificate that says they're an OT8, even though they may be the most incompetent, uh, socially inept person on the planet, if they've got a certificate that says they're OT8, they got big status in Scientology. If they, it used to be that if you had a certificate that said you're a class eight auditor, that that was a big status in Scientology, but that's not much. I mean, they're not even a class eight or a class six course anymore anyway, but these days being an auditor in Scientology is like, it's not really treated with much respect. It used to be the thing. Nowadays it's a nothing. It's it's a big old nothing burger. You, being yeah, you, you bring up a really good point there. So actually, the bridge to total freedom is shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has certainly shrunk under David Miscavige. Yeah. The left side has just literally uh, evaporated. Right. Like well, they halfway down. Yes. They, it, guys, they, it did nothing changed. It, it, it just closed one of the lanes. That's all. There was two lanes. <laughs> That's a big deal when one. you don't have a... It's, Dave's repaving it, and he's just been repaving it for it's 20 or 30 slow. years. Yeah. It's just a little slow. He's diverting it to yeah. more trips to your bank account. Yeah, and it's definitely not air, air earthquake safe because yeah, SBTV right. has proven that we're shaking that bridge up pretty good from this end, so. But those okay, people I, got accustomed to being kind of privy to this secret info that Dave and the briefings that he would give, it was just to them. They weren't even allowed right. to tell anybody about some of these things because they were sort of like behind the scenes stuff he's working on. And yeah. then and then when it came out, they'd be like, oh, yeah, Dave talked about this 17 years ago at a, at a yep. uh, maiden voyage event because he announced yep. the golden. They have this thing called the golden age of tech. He announced that on the free winds at one of these events. It didn't come out for five, six years after that. And, oh, and or the and golden the, age of tech two or the e meter he showed the them. E -meter. He, he showed, showed that them damn the e meter thing like six years before it eventually came well, out. He mm -hmm. showed it to them. Gosh, I want to say well, he showed it to them or he told them about it in nineteen ninety six when the golden age of tech was coming out. He told them we even have a new meter coming that you're, is going to blow your mind. And I want to say that meter blew their minds about 2007, like a decade later is when it blew their minds. And it was literally, I'm pretty sure when people saw it, they're like, we waited 10 years for the Easy Bake Oven 2.0. Like, what the hell? And it had been built for that entire 10 years just sitting on the shelf. Sitting in the shelves. They yeah, had to have an all hands to dust them off before the, the event That's announcement. True. Yep. True. Yeah. Okay, I've got I've got another IAS story that I I remembered. Yes. Seeing as how we're on the IAS theme here. Yes. Okay. 2011. Obvious I mean 2001. Obviously September 11th happened on September 11th. And you know, if you were around at that time, you will recall that you know, for 2 days or 3 days there was no air travel in the United States whatsoever. And for some time after that, uh, there was enormous amount of, of hand wrenching and worry about, you know, what's going to happen because all of the TSA 
stuff wasn't in place. The, you know, that was back in the day where you could run up to a plane as it was about to take off and bang on the door and they'd come and open the door and let you on. Mm -hmm. And the, the, you didn't go through metal detectors. You didn't do anything. Um, of course, October is October 6th is or 7th is actually the anniversary of the IES. And the event is supposed to occur then. It constantly gets pushed later and later for reasons that you may now understand because we need more time to get the videos done and we need more time between Auditor's Day or whatever this or the grand opening of that. So we're going to schedule it. So now it generally gets done in the beginning of November. But back in 2001, it was going to be in, in October. Yeah. So hand-wringing, the hand-wringing of David Miscavige about whether it was safe for him to fly to the United Kingdom was over the top. Yes. So me, Guillaume, Heber, Norman, Ray, uh, Jaeger were all pulled into the conference room and Miscavige very seriously said, um, I want to know whether it's safe for me to fly to the UK. And what should we do if it isn't? Should we hold the event? Should we not hold the event? Are you morons going to go do it by yourselves? You know, whatever. And of course, I, as the head of OSA, was the one that was supposed to come up with the answer about whether it was safe to fly or not. Mm -hmm. And this was one of those predicaments that always happens of, okay, do I say that it is or do I say that it isn't? Because either way could be just as catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. There's no right answer here. That's right. Exactly. No it's, right answer. It's always what is the lesser evil and what is the fallout? What's the least amount of fallout that there's going right. to be? Mm -hmm. Right. So I opted for, sir, you are the most important person in Scientology. So, you know, we can't risk you putting yourself in danger. Uh, by flying to, you know, a foreign country at this time. Um, me and Guillaume and Mark and Heber and Ray and Norman will do the event. We'll all fly on separate planes, so we're not all on the same plane. And we will go and take care of this handle and report. So, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> You guys are trying to steal the IES event from me. You motherfuckers. You know, I mean, it was like... And then, after that, then it becomes, okay, so how are you going to make absolutely certain I'm safe? Well, I told you already in my original proposal, there really isn't a way of guaranteeing that. You know, we're not even the United States government. We're, this is not... It's sort of out of our control. We can yeah. do things that might make less likely that something could happen, but we can't guarantee that. No, oh, and, we, and we should oh. note that he had a speech prepared for had you dared to suggest he should go, and you're trying to destroy all of Scientology by putting his life at risk and da 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 da. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's just like you can, th those are the conversations. Those questions that get posed to you like that, you know you're never going to win. No, nope, yep. absolutely There's not. There's just no way out. You it's, might as well take the medicine, right? Just yeah. say something, anything, yeah. take it and be done. It's so, actually any question that he asks is that way. He could ask you what you ate for lunch yesterday and you could end up on the RPF at the end of that conversation. Yeah. And by the way, Mike, I don't think you know that for this particular event, I was the one that ended up having to sign the purchase order to authorize $50,000 for his f charter right. flight to the UK. Oh, yeah, that, that was what ended up happening. I think that was the first, first time that there was ever a private jet used to transport speakers to or a speaker to an international event. Right. It became pretty routine after that. 
But yeah. I can tell you from the finance end, that's is that's exactly what happened. We would the IAS, and this is another thing which I think might be more prevalent now. <clears throat> but for the IAS specifically, the event budgets were 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 pinned at a, at a maximum amount because they could only spend the interest of what their investments or their um, their capital was earning. So the budget, we would get a budget and it would be like, that's it, that's what you get, don't go over. Anything that goes over, CSI has to pay for that. And one of the things that we started to have to cover was jet fuel in that event because he was, there were, I don't know how it ended up when you were there last, Mike, but he would either take, he wasn't getting just any jet, he was using Craig Jensen's jet for a while. He was using Tom Cruise's jet. He was using John other Travolta's. people's. Yeah, he was using other people's jets, but we would have to cover the fuel in the budget. Right. So that's what would go in. And I and I think pilots or something like that. But either way, it was it was a lot. It was it was I don't ever remember it being you know, less than several, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars for him to go just to, for him to go to UK and back. And, right. um, and I think, I don't think there was a lot of hanger ons that were going or entourage. It was really just his people. And that was it. I don't think, mm -hmm. did you ever go on a jet over there with him? You did? Okay. Yeah. So like maybe the speech writers or something like that times. would go yeah. with him. And but being, there was, and, it wasn't and, like, it wasn't like any event crew were going on that. Oh was, no 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 it no! It was no, no. Dave and his it was people Dave that and were Lou working on speeches, and, or and maybe George and uh, what's his name, the chiropractor, and Dan Stephen, Sherman, Stephen, Stephen Price. Price, yeah, Stephen Price. and me and Guillaume, maybe sometimes and Jaeger, and uh, oh god, and it was always because the speeches weren't done, so you assholes have to come with me now because i have to sit there and oversee you and he would go go to the bed in the back and leave us to write the speeches that's just what i was gonna ask been up for days and yeah. i remember one time i'm sitting there like literally like like dead asleep with a speech in front of me and him coming out of the the cubby in the back where the bed was and kicking me like, Ugh. you lazy fucking asshole. I can't believe you fell asleep while you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in the back lying in bed sleeping and I'm sitting there trying to write his speech. So and maddening. we did that at, and that happened at the base too. He would he would go to bed like around four or five in the morning and then he'd show up at one or two in the afternoon. Well, we all had to stay up but we had to be at muster in the morning. So if we went to bed at five or six, we'd have to get a ride to wherever we lived and then get back in and be at morning muster at like eight o'clock or whatever it was. And then he'd show up at one or two, having slept a good six, seven hours, whatever it was. And then he'd be all fresh and cheery. And we'd be like, uh, we'd be dragging ass all day or all week because that would just go on every night. And, and when Mike, would be on these events, um, he would be up. Sometimes I would leave at like four or five in the morning and Mike would be in there still doing stuff in where in these offices where they did all the event speech writing was in the the division that I worked in. It was in <laughs> our offices. So whenever the events would come on, they would literally just take over our whole spot and they'd have people in there and meetings. And, and it's just like, where are we going to meet crew chief? Uh, well, we'll find a place, you know, we'll go, we'll go over in the studio. We'll, we'll go under the, the tree. Yeah. We'll th literally just go outside in the grass and have a meeting because Dave's taken over our conference room. Yep. But when Mike would fall asleep, if Mike would fall asleep at any point during the normal, well, not even during the normal workday, just at any point while this was happening, then Dave would call his professional photographer in yeah. and they would do a whole photo shoot of Mike sleeping. <laughs> and then at the next, usually it was at the meeting the next day where it was like, um, uh, did you guys get me all the, the speeches and da, 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 da. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he goes, Oh, let me show you guys some fun stuff that I, I saw. I, I got uh, reported on last night and he would have a sheath, uh, like a, 
like, you know, maybe 20 or 30 prints, big eight by 10 glossies. And he'd just throw them on the conference table and it would just be Mike in 75 different angles <laughs> sleeping at a desk at, oh at a computer God. or something like that. And Mike, am I wrong that this happened like on a regular basis where he would do this? Regular. It was not, it wasn't even like, it was literally as soon as you'd see that big fat stack of prints, you were like, oh man, again. <laughs> and and it was so unfair because in, I mean, obviously it's unfair anyway, what a stupid comment. But in later years, remember he would assign somebody from Religious Technology Center to ghost you. Like yes. not, not the real world meaning of the word ghost, but to stand by you 24 seven. And then just every time you doze off, take a picture. I mean, what the heck exactly. kind of mental warped world is not that? Not even wake you up. Not even yeah. like, hey, wake up. It's we got to like, well, <laughs> it, it actually got it actually got worse when John Horwich and I were assigned to edit all of the basic books, and we had six weeks to do. With our our assignment was you have to edit, compare to the original manuscripts, all of the L. Ron Hubbard books and produce a glossary for each in six weeks and now, how many books were there uh 14 or something yeah, yeah. i mean 14 science books. of survival is like 450 pages right <laughs> dianetics is like 390 pages or something i mean it was just insane and we had tari and whoever his you know whoever else was in the office of cob like constantly hounding us like your tm for your time machine order your, your target day your target for this is you've got six hours you have to have this book done in the next seven hours you have to have it done by tomorrow at 6 p.m or whatever mm -hmm. john and i were literally we slept on the floor in his house just down from the the g's because john holwich lived in a house on the property um and we literally slept on the floor i think we had a total of 12 hours of sleep in two weeks while we wow. were editing these books and in the end it got so insane that there was someone not from rtc but the cmo who was assigned to stand next to me 24 hours a day and poke me if i started looking like i was dozing off i had to be poked mm. to keep me awake so that i could edit the most important texts in the entire universe in the history of mankind with no sleep <laughs> yeah with absolutely no sleep i mean it was that's like, not going to be there's not going to be any errors in any of your work oh that no, no, uh, no. i mean that would be perfect. that would be incomprehensible oh, my gosh. and my that is inevitably what would happen this. these guys would submit it and then he would be like this is wrong and this is wrong it would it would never it was almost like you know at the end of doing all this work it's not going to be done it's just going to no, right. be everything that he wanted from the beginning that he didn't tell you is now what you're going to do and that was ultimately what was sort of the game that he played he would be like you do it are you going to make me tell you what to do and then you would no sir no sir i'm going to do it i know exactly what to do and then you do it and then he would be like no nope, you failed this is what i want you to do and it and it was almost like why don't you just tell us what you want and we'll just do that other one just checking every possible other thing that could be messed up in this book that was written 50 years ago by a, a old fuddy duddy that was just like to blabber <laughs> on endlessly but but not only that mark the the next phase of every one of those things was he would grab someone else and say now this person is going to do this oh and, i remember at that time uh, rick cruzen was the guy who you were the guy the john horowitz was the guy the <laughs> marty was the guy there was like seven guys and none of them this is the best part ever 
Not one single one of these persons was, it was their job to do what he was asking. Right. Was, right. Like the guy that's the head of OSA is now editing books. That Rick Cruzen, the only qualification that Rick Cruzen had was that he was on the RPF and he didn't do a lot of auditing. So he read all the books. And because he'd re read all the books, he was now qualified to now edit what <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard had written. He was, so, right. he was, was one of the right, only it was always another property who had read all of the books. <laughs> I know. And it was like that. It was like that for anything. Whenever Everything. there was a thing like that, you'd see a new person show up and you're like, what are you doing here? And like, oh, I'm in charge of getting uh, the new uh, the OEC. new course done like this. And you're like, you're going to do that? And be like, yeah, David, COB assigned me to do it. And you'd be like, oh, this is going to end well. You're going to be cleaning paint buckets for me in a few weeks. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> and, and the number of people that were brought in from outside the base to do this sort of shit and ended up exactly the same as everybody else you know the russ bellens and the debbie cooks and like rita. every rita remember Weinberg, rita for a while no no rita the, from um rita schwartz gruber oh, yeah yes. all these people, people brought in to handle these projects because all of the incompetent sps at gold and int couldn't do it and they would last a week or two or maybe a month or maybe even two months and then same end up the exact same as everybody else and then ultimately what would happen is Miscavige would throw up his hands and say i gotta do it myself mm -hmm. <laughs> seven years later the books got done <laughs> yeah. seven years like i was given a, a target of six weeks seven years <laughs> later we got done he has never completed ktl the key to life course He's never completed the briefing course. These are all projects that were done were, that went this route: the the key to life, the briefing course, the class eight course, or, I, the I mean, organization executive course, the OEC, yeah, the organization executive course. All of these things that oh my god, the L's, the tech volume. You know, you know the L's. Uh, I've heard Miscavige. He must have said it a hundred times. The L's are completely and utterly out the guy well well let's just up. let's just tell it like it is the guy who wrote the l's was not l ron hubbard <laughs> the guy that wrote that and if, if people are watching they don't know what we're talking about there is a run there's a series of it's three rundowns that you can do only the only can you do them at the free wins now or you can no you, no, no, you can no, no, only, only do at, these, only at the flagland base the flagland base the big building in clearwater you can is the only place you can do it. It's called there's L10, L11, and L12. And I'm not even sure why they're called L, but that's just the name of them. List, list. Okay, so list a uh, list ten list. That's it. Super yes. descriptive labeling. There. <laughs> they could have just said list. <laughs> that's like um, L1C, Mark. List one C. Oh, so yes. this is list it's just 10, list, 10, list ten, list ten, eleven, 11 and twelve, list twelve. Okay, so you go in to get auditing and they ask you a bunch of questions. And when you're done getting uh, answering or getting asked these questions, you're done. Now they charge tens of thousands of dollars for Scientologists to do these. And th this is a little, it's a little Scientology hack that you, d it doesn't matter where you are on that bridge to total freedom. It doesn't matter how trained you are. It doesn't matter what counseling you've had. You can pretty much do these exact rundowns at any point and it's encouraged that you do all three together so it's you could let's just say if you want to go to florida and you got to pay for you got to stay in their hotels you have to eat in their restaurants you're not allowed to spend any money outside of the the base and you could spend a hundred thousand dollars doing those three l's if you're a scientology civilian scientologist in and fact, so i think Mark, it's the I biggest money making each each has a minimum that you you have to buy a certain amount mm. of hours on L's and it's not refundable. It's not like you can use it and if you buy 25 hours, the 25 hours is gone whether you use all 25 hours or not. It's oh, not wow. transferable to any other service. And I think they're 40 grand a pop. I think for the 25 hours, there you go. it's $40,000 for each one. Or it's something like that, you know, in that. Vicinity. I think you get a five percent discount if you buy all three. 
Yeah. Oh, and if you're a member of the IAS. Anyway, and you pay in so, advance. But the but the, the so the 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 uh the end of the story is that those are the biggest money making service that you can do at the floor at the Florida compound at that flag land base. And now to rewind, there was a guy, L. Ron Hubbard had audit him and his name was David Mayo. And David Mayo is the one who sort of formulated these lists and did them on Hubbard and then wrote up what he did and how it worked and all that good stuff and what you would do. And that's what they're using till this day. Now that weren't guy, those, Dave, weren't those called uh, board technical bulletins that David BTBs. Mayo wrote? Yeah, yeah BTBs. BTBs. <laughs> and which, the, there, which there are none of, except if you're getting the L's. But and also, <laughs> this guy David Mayo was in the in the eighties and in, in the mid eighties. Mm -hmm. He was declared a suppressive person. Yes, but and, but not before he had done exactly the same thing with the new era. Dianetics for OTs. Right. Yes. He was brought to the inter. He was the senior CS of the Flag Service Organization. He was brought to the int base when L. Ron Hubbard had a heart attack to audit him back to health, supposedly because he was in such a bad way. He was flown, rushed out to La Quinta, and he audited Hubbard. And Hubbard invented through that at that time, quote, knots by telling David Mayo, ask me this, ask me that. I mean, the, the what? Knots is, is stands for New Era, era for Dianetics OTs. for OTs. Yeah. New Era Dianetics for OTs. Yeah. But, but for those who have n are not familiar with Scientology, the concept of the person receiving auditing, telling their auditor what they are supposed to do is, is like, it, it, it's so I don't even know how to describe it. It's like it's, it's like literally it's like, like if, if uh... you went to a psychiatrist and you said, hey, listen, these are my problems and this is why I have those problems. OK, now tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like somebody, uh, it's you know, worse. a civilian it... telling a police officer, here's what here's what law you need to, i'm following and... you need to arrest me on right exactly yeah <laughs> I, I mean it's it's even beyond that but in yeah. any event so the same thing happened again where david mayo was the one who was doing this and why he had been brought there in the first place i mean there's so many stories about these anyway things. david mayo was declared a suppressive and he was kicked out of scientology but worse than a suppressive, the issue goes on and on and on about Isn't it him like being a seven squirrel. pages or something no, like that. About how he alterizes technology and he perverts the technology and he twists the technology and he does this and he does that. <laughs> and, uh, and for the longest time, all of the knots materials were all David Mayo materials. Right. Until Dave. Miscavige Until, revised them. <laughs> yeah. And they, they 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 didn't go back. They didn't just say, oh, they got to go back to the way they were. No, he changed them another time so that they are David Miscavige's version. But the best part is that the L's have never, ever been fixed to this day. They've never not been written by David Mayo and they are the biggest money making income that Scientology gets through Scientology counseling and or that sort of thing. Now they just take, you know, they just get they take money if, from old people or they from elderly or they just um, people donate, you know, 10 million dollars and they don't do anything except for give them one of those bowling trophies that Mike has. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so these are things and there, and there's lots of things that, that we we're just bringing up these things because it kind of has something to do with what we're talking about. But there's probably I would say there's at least another hundred projects which David Miscavige ordered one of us to do in two weeks 20 years ago that's still not done and um but um and he th there's i wanted to say one last thing and this is what i was thinking of earlier there it, we, when david miscavige is taken to court 
He doesn't have anything to do with anything. He's just overseas, and he's the guy who's like the president of Scientology. He's just a figurehead, and um, and his job is really just to, to take care of Religious Technology Center, and every organization has its own head, and they all do their thing, and they're all doing their thing. David Miscavige is checking the carpet swatches. He's checking the film shots that are being shot each day. He There's piss mats under the urinals at the end base where you go pee and a little pee drips on the floor. He's the one who said, we need Specified. to put some... We need to put some rubber mats under the there and uh, like put some piss mats under there. So if you dribble a little, you don't see it on the tile. It doesn't. We're not barbarians here, you know. You can dribble on the the rubber. No one will know the difference. It's black. You're not going to see a dribble. And he, that's what he. That's the level of micromanaging that this cat's doing. And so when when they say this, oh, he's not here or he doesn't do that. You're like, what? <laughs> this place. And Aaron and Mitch were having a showdown the other day that if the place would run if David Miscavige left. And I'm like, there's no way it runs when he left because he silos everything and he is the only decision maker that says yes or no or none of that. I have a whole other idea. But so back to this IAS event, if he hasn't been doing events, they haven't done it. When's the last time they did an IAS event? It's been years, um, right? 2019, I guess. So yeah, right, right. So 2019. I don't think you're you're allowed to say that word. By the way, um, you can call it scam demic, or you can call it anything else. But I don't think YouTube likes that word. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Or don't say the c word either with the the number after it. Yeah. No, really? I think that. Oh pretty my sure. Gosh. Yeah. Wow. I've seen it bleeped Somebody in other videos. To... I've wow. seen it bleeped in other videos. That could just be over cautiousness on those uh, uh, creators' parts. Which c word? The... <laughs> um, anyway, uh, great question, Mike. Good one. You know the one. Don't make me say it. Um, anyway, Mark almost um, walked right into that. So the, if they, if they, so 2020, 21, 22. Uh. So it's been three years, four, three, depending on how you count it. They haven't done one in at least. There's been three events that didn't happen, and right. all the other events they do seven, depending on how you count them up. They do seven to twelve of these events every year, and the IAS event is just one of those. And it's, and Mike mentioned they did it in France, and I was at a, a I, I I actually put on one of the events um, that they did in Denmark. I think yeah, they that was used one to in have them. They used to have them in, in a different European country and then sometimes in the United States. And then I think after the War is Over event, which was in 1993 at the Los Angeles uh, Sports Arena, rest in peace, Sports Arena, um, that they, they tore it down. It's not there anymore. Um, oh. But um, the, I think from 1993 on, it was always at UK. No, there was some no? still on the free wins. Oh really? The oh, that must have been event? Yes. Well, that must have been oh. after there were we a, left. a couple or three, or maybe three. I don't know. I don't remember wow. exactly, but there was a couple that that ended up being at the free wins. I I think that had more to do with the scuba diving than anything else. I was just gonna say mm, if you can't go scuba sense. diving in the UK in uh, East Grinstead, Sussex. <clears throat> that um, makes sense. By the way, as long as we're talking about St Hill. Obviously, most people know that um, I grew up there, spent many years in the cadet organization there, the, uh, and le my family left England in 1988. Well, in 2007 was the first time I went back to England, and our oldest son was one and a half at the time. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this was before the days when they had locked down St. Hill. And so we had a rental car, and we drove all the way in and right up to the manor and we took a few pictures and uh anyway it was it was crazy and then we got of course um you know intercepted by a massive amount of security and cmo they were losing their minds well i i can beat you on that one claire okay yeah go for it christy and i went to the uk in 2010 for for the oh uh, we went there for the um john sweeney show yes. i was gonna say and there's all kinds of footage from pis following you around london in, yeah uh... there is but but <laughs> there's better footage of when we went to saint hill because we were staying with sam domingo yes the 
who was our good friend and we were staying at her house and we went, oh, let's go to St. Hill. Christy's never seen it. So we drove to St. Hill and I drove in and parked next to the castle. I nice. just parked on the side of the road there next to the castle. Yep. And Sam and Christy got out and walked down to the manor and went around the back and got uh. some Scientologists to take their photos <laughs> in front of the manor. Uh, like nice. they're there posing and some <laughs> poor sucker Scientologist took their photos <laughs> posing in front of the manor. Oh, eventually, eventually the legal dur of OSA UK realized that it was me sitting in the car and came up and insisted that I leave. And I'm like, well, I can't leave, you know, I, I can't leave just yet because Christy and Sam are down at the manor and they're getting a tour down there. So, you know, oh my God, the security was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> running Big down flap. the Big down flap. The oh my gosh. I'll drive down to the turnaround and pick them up down there and wait for you guys to get back with them. <laughs> well, they appeared about two minutes later. But uh, those, we have those photos somewhere. I should pull those out for our IAS event. Yes, oh, yes. We should pull out anything yes. we can get for IAS. Um, <laughs> but the thing awesome. I was going to say about it being in England was the way it was explained to me by David Miscavige was that all of these other events that happen throughout the year, they're all fundraising events. They're all money-making events. That's the only reason that they're held is either to sell something and take money or just take money, period. <clears throat> and the reason that they have to do this one in the UK at least once every year is because they're not gonna get a lot of these foreign Scientologists, these outside of the United States Scientologists that have money to all go to the free winds. So th this event is sort of like, it's the next level down from that free winds, that exclusive free winds event. This is the one right below that where you can all come, if you're from the United States or you're from Europe, but they try to get all these heavy hitters, all these whales from all over Europe to come to that event so they can get millions and millions. And I remember back in the 90s, they were doing 20, 30 million dollars at one event they would get yeah. in donations. And now I can't is, imagine what it is. That event is the big, the big one for money making. Mm -hmm. They build people up forever because it's the only one now where you can potentially be handed your bowling trophy by Mr. Miskovich himself. On stage. Mickey Witz. Yeah, because yep, you can stage. get that. You can get that at any of these other events. They might give you an award, but it, David Miscavige is not going to stand there and take a picture with you. And I think I want to say they do the event thing, but after the event is over, there's a whole photo shoot that happens with the people and the. the isn't aren't there photo no, there's shoots? There's a second event. The IAS event occurs on Friday night. That's the televised event. You're right. And on that's Saturday the night ball. is the patrons ball. Yes. And all of the heavy hitters get the tables down the front near Dave's table. And, you know, it's all like manipulated and organized. And they come up on stage and they have little spots where they have to stand and to make sure the camera angles are right and that they look good. And, you know, they, they spend a, an inordinate amount of time through the months leading up to this event, setting people up for that event to give their money at that event because yeah. they love the is loves to be able to tell miscavige sir you made 25 million dollars for the is tonight mm -hmm. yeah even yeah. though they've spent months of legwork setting it up to right. get that it's, money it, you, at you that did night. this and <laughs> and you know you talk about all these events being money making you know that there always had to be something to be sold at yes. every event. Yeah. And the theory was that if there was a new book or a course or whatever being released, the release on that day had to recover the cost of the event and that it was successful if that happened and not successful if it didn't. And so, it, ne it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, 
he would be told that it had happened. Well, yeah, we would like, sell, often. we would sell, we would make 1500 sets of a course and then we'd sell those to the orgs and then the orgs would pay us and we'd say we sold out. And then those cassettes or CDs or DVDs or whatever it was would then sit in a storage room at the organizations for the rest of time. Sometimes Until they we got wet or, uh, or something, yeah, or there was a flood a fire or, or yeah. whatever. And then yeah. they, and sometimes well, the next we would, edition came. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, sometimes we'd come out, we'd say, hey, we're coming out with a new edition. We need to know what your stock levels are on this thing. And they're like, we still have the original amount you sent us five years ago when this came out the last time. <laughs> if you come out with a new one, those are all going to be dead stocks and be like, sucks to suck. You better sell them before the event. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you, re you remember how many, how many, how much effort was put into trying to sell out things that everybody knew were now going to be out of date yes. right before the event. They, yes. would, they would get poor people to buy all the outstanding, all the leftover copies that they had of the books, knowing that there were new ones coming out mm -hmm. next week and that they would be forced to buy all of the new ones and throw away the ones they just bought. Well, yes. they did that with the e-meter too. Those e-meters that Dave was like, this e-meter is a piece of junk. We need to come out with this new Mark 8 e-meter. That was in 1996 when he realized that the current e-meter that everyone had was a piece of junk. They did a little teeny little fix, like a little, the weakest patch kind of fix they could do. And then they came out with the Mark 7 Quantum, which was still yeah. a giant piece of junk. Mm -hmm. And then it was the 2007 when the new meter came out. So... Uh, the Mark yeah. Ultra, the Mark yeah, the, 8 Ultra. Yeah, it's yeah. 2007. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was two something like that. It was in the mid. It was in the late. It was right after I late. left. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, 2007, 2008, but they were selling all those crappy meters all that time, and then as soon as that new one came out, it was like, oh, you got to throw out those other ones. This Easy Bake is what we're making all our brownies in the Easy well, Bake now. They were so bad. Remember, Mark that Miscavige had the guts pulled out of all the Mark 7s at Flag and replaced with the Mark 8 movement. Yes. Even Ian, though yes. nobody knew at yeah. the FSO or anybody who was public had no clue that, that these meters were actually the Mark 8 meters being used at the Flag Service Organization yeah, because, he... because they were so bad. And you remember who got the first one? Do you remember who no. got the first fake Mark 8? No. Tom Cruise? Mm. Tom Cruise we because I oh, remembered I remembered that we had to make special ones in gold because this is like in 2004 uh 2003 when Russ Bellin and all these guys from the Church of Spiritual Technology even though in in Golden Era Productions there's a, a division or a department called the Hubbard Electro Manufacturing Department it was being built by these guys at uh, Church of Spiritual Technology and they and Golden Era Productions had nothing to do with making that meter for the most part but yeah. um but when they needed to retrofit one well, they went to the gold guys and said, hey, we need to make this look like this. And they put all that stuff in there. And then um, that was given to Tom. And then after he gave it to Tom, he was like, you know who could really use these is the guys in Florida at Flag. And so then we ended up making a whole bunch of them. But, um, but that was an afterthought after he got Tom his. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, I, I actually didn't know that. Yep. You just yeah, Tom Cruise... Thought. Tom Cruise got the first one he of the, of a person who wasn't in the C organization. It, Tom Cruise was the only just regular public uh, civilian uh, Scientologist to have a Mark Eight. You know, whatever it was, five, yeah, there, th four or five a... years before they came out. I'm so. sure it helped him a great deal. Oh, I'm sure he he just probably I'm sure he got rid of his way wife, more BTs that... and clusters than anybody else ever <laughs> yeah. in the history of the universe. Uh... He has got the highest production of eradicating and removing BTs and clusters of anybody ever. You know, Mike, we were doing a video yeah. the other day. I don't remember. Oh, it was with Amy and Matt. And um, and I have a new thing, which I think it could catch on. I don't know. I'm not going to force it on anybody. But instead of getting rid of the BTs, because supposedly you could have 10, 30, 40,000 of these body things attached to you. Instead of getting rid of them, why not 
kind of harness them for your own purposes and use them. So like when something happens, you just go, BTs activate, and then they, they go, you know, you just like, that's, you know, talking about uh, like, hey, I need- What is that, Power Rangers or something? What, what Wonder Twins, TV show? Wonder Twins, Wonder <laughs> Twins activate, ching! That's what you do, you go, BTs activate, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have now you, plus 10,000 alien souls. I mean, that's, With I don't know, knows what, what varying skill sets. I mean, you know, tap into that. That's what I'm saying. They're so good at doing all these things. They've lived millions of years. They're from 75 trillion years. They're from another galaxy. They could have tech that we don't even know about. And <laughs> we're not, we're just, and we're basically just evicting them. With, they got nowhere to go. They Are they just go. jumping on somebody else? That's that's yeah. irresponsible. That, if you ask you me. know, I I have to say, <laughs> at one point, I was like, oh, no wonder there's um you know overpopulation because people are releasing their bts and then they're going and picking up new bodies yeah this <laughs> when is i just, was in of course these guys have got it <laughs> all like, wrong you know, doesn't yeah. work that way well mine used to jump on dave oh, oh. i remember him saying that <sighs> they used to they jump on him yeah that's why the copper wire got installed so they couldn't get in they couldn't get on him so that they would drain out of me into the dirt instead of jumping onto dave Whoa! I didn't. I knew about the copper rods thing, but I never understood the connection. So these were literally just like rando BTs that were jumping off of you and going on to Dave. Yeah. Uh, it was he. What he got a cold or something? Why did he think they somebody, were getting on him? Somebody needs to make BT off spray. <laughs> BT off. Yeah. <laughs> BT off. You know, I, I needed some BT on. Spray. I'm writing that down right, right now. I Zeno Industries can look some into this. Sticky, some sticky <laughs> stuff to look. keep them on so that they wouldn't interbulate and upset Dave. I'm going to ask Lord uh, Zenu about this because he's my homeboy. I'm going to ask okay. him if we can get some Zenu off. Well, while you but... make your notes, honey, um, so so people are asking what date the fundra fundraiser is. Of course, oh. we'll we'll check with all all participating parties, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and suggest that we tentatively plan on Sunday, November 5th, which happens to also be Guy Fox Day. Okay, I don't know that that is a big Fox poll for people. Day. Like, <laughs> yeah, get your okay. anonymous, get your anonymous mask out, folks. We got great Guy idea. Fox Day coming Thanks up. Thanks for the great idea, great input. Yeah, I was thinking that we was could well do it. Received. Guy Fox Day. Oh I was God. thinking, babe, we got to do it on the day that the event is going to happen because that's See, how we're going to get the viewers. The fundraising event is actually Saturday the 4th. That's okay. the Good. IS patrons ball. Perfect. Okay. Then that's when okay. we do it. I think that we should do it on, on Saturday the 4th. Everyone in the November. chat who's from England is with me, but that's okay. We'll we'll go with November 4th. I haven't seen one person that's it's big yeah. in the UK. Aposte Alex came to my rescue. Well, uh, rain virus says it's big in the UK. I know it it's is. big in the UK, but it is. I hate to break it to you, UK <laughs> We're folks. We're not in the UK. We're mostly. not in the We're, UK. But oh also, but also, you make up about three percent of our viewership when we look at the analytics. It is the oh, next boy. biggest viewership outside the United <laughs> States, but it's not that much. But um, we're here and we're doing it. We want you to see it. But I don't know that we're gonna we're gonna rally a holiday around one of your holidays. We wanted to do it on the same day so that people think, oh, this is the patrons' ball or this is whatever, and they will and we'll cover. We'll be covering what's happening, but it'll be the S. TV coverage, not the yes. internal Scientology. Coverage. Yeah, we could even do it at the same time that it's airing in the UK. Oh, because okay, they now we're good. they have the event yeah. like at either seven or eight, so okay. we could do so, it at two or three in the that's afternoon. Perfect. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah, I like perfect. That. Brilliant. That's perfect. I think the UK is only four hours, or did they change their daylight saving? Well, now? no, you're you're closer to them than we are so it's yeah, different know. for each from of us, us but either way us, I know, I like, know. like the live we did with it's andrew seven last hours. weekend he was seven hours ahead yeah yeah oh, it was seven, seven. yeah it's from seven. you it's... so that's five from me okay yeah perfect okay so whatever tentatively we'll that's when we'll do it guys all the whoever was asking um then uh, we'll do that. I just want to put this up from Amy real quick because she's piping in on one of these clusters. He said us executives were all one big BT cluster. Yes. Wow. How does oh, that many work? Times. I think that doesn't work though, right? 
I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't understand you, how you, you uh, well, you're not, you're not like really at the level. Well, to I haven't read Dianetics even. This. So, I mean, what the right, hell, so, <laughs> you know, Claire and I could go into a bit more of a, a detailed description of this, but okay. You know. Yep. Well, you yeah. guys figure that out. I'm going to figure out how to harness the power of BTs. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. Tell you, I've got a question. We've been there for an hour and a half. We haven't even read a comment other than oh, that yeah. one or a question or anything. Are we gonna do any of those? Or are we yeah, just gonna let's, blow yeah. everybody let, off let's, today? Let's no. Let's do Q and A, and then we can wrap it up for tonight. Yeah. And first of all, I'm putting this one up because it's special. I tagged it. Congratulations oh, yes. on the Magpies Grand Final win. Uh, ten lead changes. Uh, equal. Did you watch it, Mark? Most yes, and yes. So also. Do I. Is it not going to be an instant classic uh, grand final? Uh, like it already? was. It, it was, was an amazing. absolute classic. It was an absolute classic. It was great. Thank you, Tassie. Great that game. is uh, very appropriate now that Wouldn't Mike have been so great I. if we didn't win, but it was great. Yes. It was still great. Um, Annabelle says, thanks for saving me from bear attack vids. Love. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're welcome. Oh, I'm not sure what that is, but I did watch a bear attack video yesterday myself, so I'm not sure uh, if that's going around. Um, Sai says, so lovely to see the three of you together, and Mike is looking so much better now. We need IES shirts. Yeah, get on that, Claire. We got to get that merch ready for the fundraiser. Okay, um, I'm not sure what that's going to be, but uh, we'll figure something out. Thank you very much, Sai. You're very generous. Um, Caroline Wirast. Wirastika. 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 Yeah, there you Question, go. what are the whales? So we did answer that. That is the, uh, those are the high rollers in Scientology. Thank you, Carolyn. Yes. Um, Alana um, Eschpeter. Um, been lurking for years. Great to see you three still bringing attention to the shady actions of the COS. Read your books and waiting, read your books and waiting for yours, Claire. Yay. There you go. More pressure on Claire to get her book done one of these years. <clears throat> um, I'm aiming for March 13th, L. Ron Hubbard's birthday. Wish me luck. Oh, we can see now we're just going to time everything to their events and it's just yes. going to really, uh, I got to tell you this right now before we bring up the next comment. There is so much SPTV content. I was trying to figure out logistically how they can watch it all and re and and summarize and report up. I haven't figured it out yet. It's just it's too much. They must I know that they have an uh like a transcription software that they paid millions and millions of dollars for that's at this new SPTV place so they can translate and they can do all kinds of stuff with it. They have to be feeding it into that, but I I think Someone somebody still, still has, has to read it. Somebody still has to go through and clean it up and pick out the pieces that are relevant and who got that info to us and figure out who they got to track down these leaks. And at this point, it literally is just Niagara Falls of leaks. There's no yep. way. Absolutely. Trace de Ace. Super sticker. Thank you, Trace Thank you. de Ace. Trace de Ace. I like that. Um, Angelina. Hi, Mike, Claire, and Mark. Hello, Angelina. Um, do the big donors know they are called whales? Love you all from Mexico. I don't think that's I something you they say. Do. Yeah, I don't but think it's something you say do, in front I of them. They're proud of it. Mm, Maybe. Yep. They're like they love to be categorized in the whales category. They're yeah, the big donors. So. They're the big yeah. supporters. They're the. Yep. You're right. Probably mm. they do. Well, they 100. percent The people that can give millions of dollars they play a little game with these people and they they'll you know they'll work it as long as they can work it until they have to give it over but um but they know that it, everybody involved in these transactions knows their part in the transaction mm -hmm. um rorschach 2112 the more I learn about Scientology, the weirder it gets. Fascinating subject, batshit crazy, but fascinating. Love you guys. <laughs> yes, and you know, that's the reason why it's funny. At first I was trying to, we gotta tell this, we gotta tell that, we don't. We just tell everything as we can tell it. There is enough crazy that if Scientologists quit and left, we could still talk about it for a few years and not run out of stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're yep. just, right now, um, Scientology is spending millions and millions of dollars promoting um, our channels uh, on YouTube and stuff like that. Like a lot of the ads we're getting are, um, I'm getting Dr. Berg ads, I'm getting Scientology ads, I'm getting 
ads on my channel that Scientology are paying for. So um, I don't know what to tell you. Scientology is kind of feeding this beast, which is SPTV. Yep. Stephanie Stewart, uh, thank you for that, Stephanie. That's very generous. Captain Chucklesworth arrived. Please thank the Headley Packing Company for doing such a nice job <laughs> shoving his ass in a box. Yeah, you know, we had Stephanie. It's so funny that you mentioned that. Thank you very much for the uh, super chat. Um, I told, I mean, full disclosure, Claire, myself, and my three boys, we're the ones that pack all these little Captain Chucklesworth or dirt, Dirty Davy doll or whatever you end up calling it. We're packing them up. And the other day I said, hey, guys, I know we're not, I said, to be rough and just shove them in the box and all that, but you can't leave his legs sticking out of the box. You got to poke. <laughs> it, was like, it was like the Wicked Witch of the West. There were little toesies sticking out. Yeah. We're like, I was like, oh, you got to poke all his parts into the box. <laughs> Otherwise, he could leave. he could lose a part on the way to wherever he's going. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Our yeah. kids definitely have our um supreme packaging genes. Oh yeah, that they is definitely. For sure. They're good. They are so good. Lafenda Grucklinga says, "What happens to the money the orgs make in countries where COS doesn't have tax exempt status? It's amazing how much we never ends can learn here." Yeah, now this is a very interesting thing, Mike. You should kind of explain this because this is and also this big thing that just happened in the uk is a big deal in regards to that yeah it is a big deal but understand that this is a creative accounting 101 as created by l ron hubbard that all scientology organizations don't make any money they all lose money on their book because they get sent these huge bills from Church of Scientology International, from Golden Era Productions, from RTC? all of these other does things. Does RTC pay them, or or does no, RTC? No, they pay. Uh, they pay. The, the only people that pay RTC are the advanced dogs. Right. Oh, oh, the okay. advanced dogs. Okay. They pay a licensing agreement for the advanced dog technology. Yeah. Okay. The OT it's levels. a percentage of the advanced uh, value of service delivered for advanced levels. So all the other organizations around the world lose money on their books, so they don't pay any taxes. It's not really significant whether they are or are not tax exempt when it comes to the money. What is significant about the tax exemption is the the reporting. You know. PR value and the protection that it affords of being able to say you're a religious, a bona fide religious organization. So Scientology has it all very well worked out how those organizations that are in countries that do not have tax exemption don't pay any taxes anyway because they owe huge amounts of money and they make a loss every year. Uh, I get Didn't it. that even include... Um, rent on the ideal org buildings. Being oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where, office, where yeah. there is an ideal org building that the local parishioners have paid for yes. with their donations, that is owned by one of the international entities, like the Church of of uh, oh, God. Scientology the Properties International, CSRT, the uh, Church of Scientology Religious Trust or one of the other organizations, the Building Management Services Organ. I mean, they've got they got dozens of these things. They charge them rent and they don't pay the rent because they don't have the money to pay the rent. But that goes uh, in as a bill. So their balance sheet shows they don't have any money. Right. Even and, though their local people in most cases were the ones that bought the building and paid right. for the renovations, they still right. don't get that. None of that stays with them. Yeah. It's all, <laughs> yeah, it is a, crazy, definitely, crazy. It, it is a web of nonsense. Yes. Uh, Matt Elliott, M-A-A-S-O-S-P-T-V, <laughs> says, Mike, <laughs> are you still in touch with Taylor Hawley? I haven't been in touch with her. I'm, I mean, I... If I needed to, I could. Do you, if you need something, let me know. She is the person that wrote the treatise about Scientology being in violation of the IRS code. She oh, was wow. a law student. Oh, at I Texas remember Tech. that episode of it's Fair brilliant. Game. She it's is a, a she was brilliant, amazing. Brilliant thing. Yes. And, oh my gosh. Yeah. Nice. We should get yes. her on. Um, you could do an inter oh, you already did a fair game episode with her. Yeah. Yes, okay. Buckled up buttercup 
question do the whales know they're called whales we answered that sorry i didn't see that that was that um oh wow look at that tracy not tuggy hi mark i was in the woody guthrie center today i thought about you wow okay <laughs> oh, thank you nice. tracy um slappy white claire is looking radiant tonight thank oh, you for that slappy well, true. slappy white very true i appreciate it thank you Obi O'Brien award for and Mark is looking thin, by the way. Well, thank you. Mark is that. looking thin and healthy. And so I do. are you, I gotta Mike. Say, Yay. I'm looking fat. <laughs> no, you're not. Well, oh fat my up. gosh. You not have compared to that color. thumbnail picture. You look, you look great compared to the thumbnail. And that was you at your best at that time. So mm -hmm. you're looking mighty fine. Cheers Obi to, cheers to, uh, radiant SPTV hosts. There <laughs> yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. You want to know what my secret is? I harnessed five BTs last week, and I got them working out for me. Skinny BTs. You no, want, no, they you just work out. The ones that like a like to lose weight. I harnessed. I harnessed all those keto BT, BTs, yeah, and there uh, you go. it's helping me out. Yep. Obi O'Brien says, award for fastest growing SPTV channel, award for most channels promoted, award for most viewers in a live. Awesome. Yeah, we're nice. definitely going to have to figure out all these awards. Oh, I just thought of so many ideas. Thank you, Obi O'Brien. Yes, thank um, you. It's going to be that's so much be, fun. Mark your calendars. Well, do we have to? Gonna yeah, be we have to start. The IES one, we'll have to figure something out. Then that. M I think it should be donor based, but I'm not exactly sure how we do that. And then maybe on March 13th, when we have the birthday game, that's when we have the SPTV birthday game awards. Oh my gosh. You know what would be so funny is if we can get Kelly Copter to do an intro, but instead of horses and flags, it's like donkeys. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, that's not too far off from the other idea that I had, but we will do. Join us now. As we bring you live, we're going to do the whole thing. Mark's going to play Jeff Pomerantz. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Join <laughs> us now. Um, Di <laughs> Donna Rose says, aftermath Christmas ornament? Mm, not a bad mm. idea. You know, well, unfortunately. Well, there's one coming up. An right. aftermath Christmas ornament? Well, well, I mean, you could you could, you could put a, a loop <gasps> on him true. and make him an ornament. No, no, he's got Velcro hands. He can you could just wrap them around a tree branch on the tree. No, hey, that's he exactly. He yes, doesn't. he does. What? What are hmm. you talking about? Yeah, he does. One hundred percent. Look. Oh, OK. All right. I, I stand corrected. You scared me for a second. I got yeah. descriptions with Velcro in them. Um, OK, so, so can people buy those things now? Starting they tomorrow. Go tomorrow they're going to okay, go. That's what I thought. I thought it was tomorrow. Yeah. But we tomorrow. sent out an advanced pre sale link, which I've learned today is now no longer working. So if anyone still wanted to use a pre sale link, just shoot me an email and I'll send you a new link. What's the point of a pre sale link if the link is going to be the normal link tomorrow? Yeah. Well, that's, you get a that's discount? the thing. We're no, like, no, it's no, just no. advanced because you we pay extra for the pre sale link, right? Nope. No. No, it's the same price. Yeah, it's it just that matter. we're pretty Tomorrow... sure we're going to sell out. Yeah. Well, we don't know, but it's definitely, it's looking pretty, um, it looks like there's not going to be a lot. Um, yeah. I'm just, now that we're just on the subject, I've just got a little uh, thing I wanted to put up here for a second. Oh, there was an issue with your file. Okay, whatever. Um, then I won't. I'll do it later. Terry Hodgkin, um, your book arrived today, Mike. Now I oh, have yours good. and Mark's books autographed, waiting to get Claire's next. I'm in awe of all that you've done with the Aftermath Foundation and your videos. Thank you very much, Terry. That is Thanks, very, Terry. Very I'm nice. glad you got the book. I've been sending them out like crazy. You have? You get a lot of the signed ones? Well, yeah, because I didn't do it for a while. And then a bunch of people asked. And then so I put it back on my blog and said, you know, you can get an autographed copy again. And now I'm like going back and forth to the post office all day, every day. Yeah, I just do okay. one run in the morning. That's how I do it. Well, so, so do know. I actually. But I, it sounded better to say it like that. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. It just sounds like you're driving because, around Florida with boxes. Well, um, <laughs> I, I don't have a team of minions that do my that's true. book packing. So I have to do mm -hmm. it all myself. Oh, boy. Yep. Well, actually, Christy prints the label. So. Okay. Here is the... Here's a sneak preview, guys. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but um, I here, can let's see, see if we can. Oh, I just killed this. Um, oh. 
That's all good. We'll put it back the way I had it. Um, if I could figure that out. There, there we you go. go. Oh, oh, lost mic. I give up. It's Hold okay. On. You don't need there to see. There you go. There, we go. there you go. Okay. Let's do this. So we've got Elrond's. Th th this is what happened, guys. You know, these are the things I struggle with. You guys had a lot of great suggestions on what we should call these things. And I thought a lot of them were really good. And some of them are silly. And some of them are just plain stupid. But I like that everybody gets included. So we kept almost all the names that had sort of some sense of uh, consistent. Uh, can is this just one page concession. or is there more pages? There's more pages, but I'm just going to show this one. Okay. We have El Elrond's Leprechaun, um, Damn It Davy Doll, Puppet Boy Davy, Captain Davy Chucklesworth, Captain Keebler, Captain Space Davy, Captain Poopy Pants Dave, Dinky Dirty Stinky Troll, Dave the Fart Elf, and Davy the the whole troll and then there's a whole nother page of a bunch of other ones but those are the things that you guys are going to get to buy um and well, i um, call mine fake navy davy because i think yes that's the best one and there is fake navy davy is on there as well so um mm -hmm. we have fake navy davy and there's another one space navy davy or something else anyway I, but I want to what I want to have you guys do if you do end up getting one or if you don't even get one I at least want you to go to the SP shop and read the descriptions and give me your feedback on the descriptions I did spend a lot of time putting those together and um, and they some of them I mean if you don't laugh out loud you're definitely gonna laugh to yourself you're gonna laugh in your head okay <laughs> oh, your yes. mind your mind's eye is gonna be looking at some laughing okay <laughs> if you're feeling down just go to the spshop.com and read some descriptions you'll get some chuckles <laughs> oh my god doctor is how do you say this doctor is it juan lay juan lay that's what i'd say okay juan lay Juan Lay, thank you very much. This person has been so generous. Yes. She has donated, um, I, she's done a ton of, uh, if not super chats, just donations by, I think she bought um, those little dolls that we could do a giveaway with, um, the she, Captain and Chucklesworth. She, <clears throat> she purchased five paperback books, um, which we gave away. And she has an amazing survival yeah. story herself. So, yeah, just an amazing person. Thank you for that. She says, love work, uh, love work all SPTV and Aftermath Foundation do. Making my lab students listen to you and SPTV six hours telling them to subscribe. Wow. <laughs> m and &M listening to your books as I go. Keep having Mission Impossible style escape dreams. Blessing your, blessing, blessing to your health, Mike. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you very much. You're very generous. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. We had somebody on here the other night that said they made their, was it, it wasn't their students. It was something else they made every, oh, their coworkers. They made their, they had 30 coworkers. They made subscribe to SPTV channel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was like, and another Jugs. person, another person <laughs> said that they got their entire dentist office watching SPTV. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know if we said this, but we were in an airport, Mike, and somebody came up to us in Denver airport and they were getting off a flight and we were getting on a flight and we were just, you know, you know, you know, when I'm in airport mode, we're like, it's on a mission. We got to get, yeah, yeah. get the whole family to this plane and through security. Anyway, this guy stopped and he was just, and he was just like, oh, um, I just I'm sorry to bother you. I just wanted to say go SPTV. And I was like, what? <laughs> the same happened at the, at the airport Tampa airport. Oh, that's right. At Tampa, it happened as well. I forgot about that. <laughs> it happened to me in the supermarket like three days ago. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. And <laughs> uh, and uh, at Homies five days ago. Wow. wow. Yeah. SPTV. Nice. SPTV Nation. Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to talk about UK all night. You're going to get an apostate Alex in here. If I hit 10K, YouTube will let me do a fundraiser. Help me get there, and I'll live stream the protest outside the IES event for the aftermath. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. I, I heard there's going to be a protest at the St. Hill during the event. Mm. Oh, my God. It would be so cool if we could and show little clips of that. Yes. And well, gonna, well, happening he's, live. During our live fundraiser. Trail. Well, he, oh, maybe this is they turning a into a big thing. Too. It is. Yeah, we go. We're going live to the scene. Uh, apostate exactly. Alex, what's <laughs> happening report. down there? Our report correspondent is Alex. on the scene here. What's going on down there? Have you? Has that Davey been amazing. sighted? <laughs> yeah. Has anybody seen little Davey? 
Um, and now we'll thing- tune in to, to our correspondent at, what's the name of the airport, Mike? Farm, Farmer? Farnborough. Farmer. Any, any sightings private at Farmer? No. <laughs> yeah. any, any private jets arrived? No. All right. We'll, we'll come back to you in a minute. <laughs> back to St. Hill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be so amazing. We might have to upgrade our StreamYard subscription to pull that off. Um, I actually, you know who could do it is Aaron because he might have like the King Daddy uh, set up over there. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a strategy session. Yeah. To be continued apostate, Alex, yeah. but good thinking. We like your, we like where you're going with this. Uh, Laura Font says, Mike, it's been said you have the most complete collection of COS books. Were you able to go back and get your belongings after you left or were you gifted books? Please tell me you didn't pay for that shit again. <laughs> uh, I didn't I didn't pay a penny for any of it. And no, I wasn't able to go get back and get my stuff. And if I'd gone back to get my stuff, they wouldn't have given me any of the Scientology stuff anyway. So no i every every one every book all the oec vols the tech vols like realize that people had like more than one copy Mm -hmm. many people because they'd been you know beaten into buying copies of these books and materials and they had them sitting in their garage i mean i had all the congress i threw most of those that shit away because I didn't have time to ever listen to it or go through it or try and find anything in there and there's no index so they're pretty useless to me but i i have the tech balls over there and the oec and you know the um oh there was another project that never got completed the blue volumes (gasps) the r d series you know (laughs) there's a guy there's a guy that was on aaron's channel um last week i can't i think he's from edmonton He's from Canada somewhere. It's um, PTS for Life. PTS for Life is I the think name he's of his here. channel. I think he's here in the chat. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Anyway, he has a complete set of the LRH ED packs. Do you so have do I. Those? Oh, I yeah. didn't know yeah. you had those. Ugh. I thought it was like a big find. I thought it was like. <laughs> Mike, Mark was ready for the big reveal. And then Mike's like, oh, yeah, I got those. Oh, well, look at you. Look yep. at you. Wow. I've got those. I've got um <clears throat> The introduction to Scientology ethics specialist. Oh my oh, god, yeah, I did that. That has so got, much. Um, <laughs> oh, an, an earlier edition of the Hubbard ethics specialist course. Oh yeah. wow. I've got the, this is my special. This is my special course, the mm. PTSSP course. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I've got like I got lots of stuff here, man. Nice. Uh, well, then I will the tell him. Auditor course. Well, I'll tell him that I no longer need his then. I didn't know that you had a full set already. Um, Your set actually is a better set than the ones. He has those old kind of um, spiral binder. um, Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. That was the previous version before the one you had, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, Here, oh, Amy Scobie's in the house. Hey, Amy. Hey, Amy. (laughs) Mike was always in the hot seat. He was. Yes, he he was. was. (laughs) I cannot, for the whole 15 years I was there, um, yeah, I'm going to say you were in the hot seat the whole time. The only time I didn't think you were as in the hot seat was when I was in Los Angeles, when you would come down to the um, L. Ron Hubbard Life exhibition that was in the Ho- Hollywood yeah. T building. You seemed to kind of be like chill while you were down there because you didn't have Dave breathing down your throat. Well, that was also when I was the LRH Post Bureau Int. I wasn't on, in Osa World. Oh, yeah. so you oh. were the, so you was were the, the PR guy. Yeah, yeah he Mike, was the you L. Ron be... Hubbard's public relations officer that yeah. was what dead, your job dead was. runs public relations <laughs> that's right you were the pr guy for a, for dead, a dead guy, guy. i mean that's Winning. gotta be that's gotta be easier it was a high paying Osa. job it was a very high paying job you, did you make 46 dollars a week on that job too i did yeah. sir yes yeah nice. but at one point mike was actually going to be dave's um uh project operator were yeah. you mike yeah yeah like he you he, you were going to be in his personal office just getting his orders done. Well, I was I, I was always on the hot seat, but then on the other hand, uh, you know, in between the hot seat moments, I was also like one of the heroes. Mm. Like, you know, you know, Mark. At one point, he sent me back to RTC from Clearwater, and I was running RTC. I remember that. And that I wasn't one, even in RTC. That's when yeah, I was, was still there. That's when you and Claire crashed strange. on the motorcycle. That's exactly right. 
Yeah, yeah. you got you were driving. Were you driving a car and no, she was driving? I she was driving a car. Yeah. Were you both driving I, cars though? Yes. Yes. And you I just, fell off my motorcycle. That was a separate incident. Oh, that that's a right. Incident. That was a separate yeah. thing. But yeah. I remember M Mark and, Mike and I have um, several different crash related <laughs> memories together. <laughs> but I remember I was like, this we guy was you. this. Yeah, or they were both. Were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to harness those things. I'm telling you, Generally, we're on to something. No, um, no, it was associated with lack of sleep. The, the car crash was at four o'clock in the morning. It was raining and Mike was heading down to the hole and at the last minute changed his mind and decided to turn and oops, there was I crashed into my, <laughs> that was one. And, and guess what, one, guess what? Yep. I just got to bring it up. Okay. No reports were written oh and gosh. no one was off the road after that. Blah, no, blah, Mike blah, didn't blah, stop blah. driving. Claire didn't stop driving. I couldn't afford driving. to stop driving. Yeah, I know, but that was one of the things. <sighs> You had to follow the rules until you didn't. And then it was yeah, just exactly. for free for all. Anyway, yep. but um, yeah, when I came back, I was, when you came back and you were doing that, I was like, we were in a meeting with this guy months ago. And Dave said that he was the biggest SP on his lines of any SPs, including the SPs that were in the outside world attacking Scientology. And now he's running RTC for Dave. I was just like, my mom, I can't keep up with the, you know, like sometimes you'd see somebody and you'd, you'd treat them like, yes, sir, no, sir. And they'd be like, you don't have to do that. And you'd be like, why is that? And you're like, I'm the deputy deputy D weeder now. And you're like, what? <laughs> you really? pulling weeds? And you're like, We're like, yeah. And you're like, well, then fuck off then. Huh? I'm going to go back to do what I was doing. I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that post existed <laughs> yeah no it was created for me that's yeah, what they say exactly. it was created for me <laughs> yep. oh uh, my I, i'm junior to the junior of spike bush yeah there you go okay now i don't know okay oh i get it lathanda grucklinga again thank you lathanda um reese just said on that's relatable reese uh you can go to her channel if you want to uh, subscribe to reese reese just said on aaron's live a few hours ago that her mother-in-law told her that her mother-in-law and father-in-law paid 100k each for the l's flights rooms food was extra there you go, there you go. i'm that telling you guys that's a hundred thousand dollars yep. um, to do these things that were written by the biggest SP before Mike showed up. Um, <laughs> it's unbelievable. David well, Mayo. Actually, it was actually before Marty showed up and then Mike. That's true. But my, Marty's now not an SP anymore. You know, that's really funny because he's when a the real whole time, SP. The whole time we were there, Dave always tells these stories like Mayo stories or Jeff Walker stories or Geo stories or when he took over, when he busted Mary on a mission. Sue. Yeah, he has all these stories and they're always about the people that are no longer there to defend themselves or tell their version of the story. Right. And then when you get out and you talk to some of these people, like that never happened. I have no idea what you're talking about. And you're like, oh, Dave has literally, he even plays make believe in his own head. Like not, <laughs> he doesn't just push it out to everybody else. Mike Brown. Thank you, Mike Brown. Hey, um, Mike. Thanks for the dribble, dribble mat. mat visual mark. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know who fixed those mats? Axel. Anybody shout out to Axel. I know you're still in, but you got out Hi, of the Axel. Sea Org. You and your wife were in a Depends commercial. I mean, you're doing what you're doing. You but, have kids now. You're but, welcome. But Axel was the one who, who got those dribble mats put in on order by order. Axel, this kid named Axel, he was the... It, they in the Sea Org, they have really stupid names for things. He was the cleaner in the galley. They called him the um, Massacre Canyon Inn, so MCI um, Sanitation Engineer. <laughs> <laughs> he was a sanitation engineer. Oh my God, I totally and, forgot and about that. And he was the one who got the. He was, I think, he was actually in the bathroom cleaning the bath. He was mopping the floor or something, and Dave came in, and he was mopping under the urinals. And Dave said, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, oh, "I gotta mop these things." He goes, "Oh, these these bar barbarians are peeing on the floor." He goes, "Yeah, and you gotta clean it, otherwise you see it on the floor." And he goes, "You know, you could put a rubber mat there, and then the pee would you wouldn't even see it." And so when he said that to that kid, you could put a rubber mat there and then you wouldn't see the pee, then that was an order to him. And somebody would have come down. If Dave um, didn't say this is, Dave doesn't say this is an order, you have to do this. 
he leaves and then somebody comes down from his office and you have an order now from david miscavige to get pee mats for under the urinals <laughs> and then all these people start showing up out of the woodwork and like uh where are we getting the mats how are you going to pay for the mats let's get a po approved i mean it's a whole team that is like the piss mat project right now. yeah and, and they just mobilize. as a comment there's nothing that makes a men's bathroom smell better than hidden pee under mats i mean <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> do you want to bet he had to get the mats approved yes no i know he did oh no no i, I he remember did. he sent up a compliance report saying what was ordered what was done and evidence and he had to take pictures of the mats i mean i went in there i peed all over them and uh and we didn't see it so it was like it's it's a pass dude it's gonna work oh my God. Did, denise dude, brown man. says 10 uh clip that Caden, clip that um denise brown old fuddy-duddy who just liked to blabber on i can't stop laughing about it, if that's not closer to the truth than any other uh, biographer the has of, written uh, of the authorship of l ron hubbard yeah l ron yeah. hubbard an old photo we got to put that in the intro video l the this event celebrates l ron hubbard an old fuddy-duddy who loved to dribble drabble on um okay and then we Thank can have a that, sentence Denise. of him dribble drabbling on yeah <laughs> like there you go folks hey hat to hear some people like to talk to hats. Hey there, hat. That's a good one. We should definitely play that one. People yeah. who people who know know. L, L, L. Ron Hubbard was dropping a few N words when he did that one. Oh, by the way, I do have to make a correction. This is another clip, Caden. Um, uh, sorry, I put that up. Um, shoot, I got mind wiped by apostate Alex. Um, they have motion sensors and cameras with facial recognition all over St. Hill now. I flagged up when I visited a few weeks back with a drone. <gasps> wow. That is wow. amazing. So, you know, I've seen this technology um, it, firsthand. I think I might have even told Mike about this, but they have cameras now that you can plug in to the Internet. And once your face and the, and, the, and the whole kind of facial recognition system, if you and the the one the dem demonstration that I saw was for a grocery store and the camera is in the aisle and there's like um, where the price tags are, are, are video screens or or coupons or or video banners and when the camera sees you it judges everything it knows your demographic where you live it figures everything out based on your facial recognition and then it put it puts ads up for stuff that you're going to eat and the guy said try it and you will be freaked out and so i walked down the aisle and then he goes okay and he went over we went over to computer screen it literally had my shopping list on the screen of what things that i buy like right now things that I buy. And I was like, that's scary. So mm -hmm. they probably just have all of the rogues gallery. They have a picture of every SP in the world and in binders and all organizations have these binders so that if Mike or Mark or Claire or apostate Alex shows up at an org, they can look through their binder and see, oh, that guy, yeah, we know that's this guy. But if they're doing it with cameras now, that's crazy. That's a lot of money. That's what they're spending your money well, on. Well, that's because Dave wants to be able to go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Bonanza. Um, Sue B. Two ninety nine. Thank you very much for that, Sue B. All this is blowing my mind learning so much. Thank you, Sue B. All that's what we're here for. Fascin yes. Fascinating, incredibly valuable snippets of information. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, this... A lot of people, they you know, they see like this um, Nixium or they hear about this other cult and there's like 100 people, there's 26 people and they're doing this. We're talking about probably 25,000 people that are involved in all this right now today that are there. They don't know any of this stuff. They think that David Miscavige is driving them off into the sunset on the, and they're going to, there's millions and millions of Scientologists over the world. And there's like 25,000 and they're, I mean, he's been, he's been driving them along the rocks for the last 20 years. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how they haven't sunk yet. <sighs> Eat more pizza. Now I listened Yay. to both Mike's and Mark's books on a recent road trip. I was amazed at what ill Davey had done Lil. to each Little. of you. Oh, oh Lil, Lil Davy. Lil. What Lil Davy had done to each of you. Very touching. I understand why it must be tough for others to write their own stories. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's not a um I mean, 
It's not for the faint of heart. No, it, it is isn't. not. And I do want to say, sometimes people bring this up, that we're very jokey and we're very, um, you know, we're flippant about some of these things. If you were there for the amount of years we were there, we already went through the ringer. We've already, and, 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 and if we retold the stories and we didn't laugh about them, we, the only other emotion is to cry. So, mm -hmm. or to be very, very angry and to break things. So, um, which I, my method is to try to, you know, try to make it a little light, tell the stories. The people that are watching that are in Scientology that are watching these videos, they 100% know that what we're saying is true because mm -hmm. we're using all the lingo <laughs> and we know all the p players and the people and we were there and we were there. So they know this is legit. There, there's no way a Scientologist could watch one of our videos and say, oh, those guys are lying. It's impossible. They know. Well, they say it. Well, but they, but know, they know that we're telling the truth. Yep. Right. LJ, are the meters approved by any regulatory agency, CE mark in Europe or FDA, US or UL rating? I don't know no. about this new one, but I doubt it. It's a religious no. artifact. So right. it's sort of like, you know. Exempted. Yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't know what to compare it to, but it's not, it's not even a real, to be honest, it's a f inside of that super high tech thing that they sell for $5,000. The easy is, bake oven. No, no, is a $40 circuit board that right. is, it's, I mean, I want to say it's not even bigger than a playing card. That's about how small it is. It's about as big as, as a playing card. And, and the total, not, not, not even the, not even the circuit board is $40. The whole cost of the entire thing is $40 and they're selling it for $5,000. So, um, yeah, it's a joke. Peace dog, super sticker. Thank you. Peace dog. We appreciate that. Lathonda again. BTs BTs assemble. It's <laughs> BTs activate. BTs activate. Well, it could be BTs assemble and then BTs activate. BTs mm, all hands. That. All hands. We're think about that. I'm telling you guys, I'm going to start a trend of BT armies. Salty Beach Girl Lori, so happy to see everyone so happy. Been catching up on old videos and every one of you made me cry this week. Love, love, love you all. Thank you for Aww. that. I didn't mean to make That's you cry, cool. but yeah. I mean it is what it is. It's it is what it's, it is. It's sad shit. Adorably anarchy. Adorable anarchy. Question: How did Tom Cruise ever read Dianetics when he had dyslexia? That's a very well, good he question. Well, he got the same out of it that everybody else did. Yeah. Nothing. Rambling, <laughs> fuddy duddy <laughs> nonsense. If the letters and words are jumbled up, it doesn't really make that much difference. Yep. You know, there is a video called the Dianetics How To Video, and you can watch that in a half an hour, and you can do Dianetics without even reading the Dianetics book. You right. just have to re follow the video. The video has taken the key parts of that book and made it so you can follow it, and you don't have to read whatever it is, 300 pages of <clears throat> fuddy-duddy nonsense. That That is the only book that appears, or the only Hubbard book that appears on the Amazon bestseller list ever. Dianetics? You're right. You're right. That and usually, Lloyd Schur, your, usually your book is outranking it every single week. Well, not <laughs> I'm just look mine. Right Leah's, now. yours, <laughs> Jenna's. Like, yes. there's a, a resurgence, uh, you know, crazy. Yep. It is. I'm going to look. You guys You guys uh, riff while I... Uh... I think Leah's... I, I okay. looked the other day and Leah's was number one for... I don't know. Maybe she put up a YouTube video and talked about a book or something. I don't know. Nice. Mine has been number one and three and five, the audio, the this, the that, for like basically a year since it was released. Yay. Congratulations. Okay. So unknown person just read your <clears throat> book, Mike. Sounded like you hated Miscavige more than Scientology itself. Hmm. Okay. I think that that probably is true. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then here we go. I like how it's like. Hey. Yeah. Event names suggest IASPTV. Yes to Guy Fox Day, Claire. Yay! <laughs> See, I got another Team Claire. Yay! <laughs> I like, I like oh, how yeah. she starts taking uh, reading the comments, and suddenly her suddenly, pro comments are oh, the ones yeah. getting pulled up. Guy Fox. Convenient. Convenient. Yeah, Carolyn yeah. Rastica. Thank you. Uh, Laura Estrada, I relay all the crazy traumatic stories to my 80-year-old mom. She enjoys it 
as a sci-fi saga <laughs> I'm reading to her. There you oh go. Well, God. that's one way to do it for sure. Oh my God. Fee in the shed. I'm with Claire. Yay! Another team, Claire. Have the boys never seen V for Vendetta? Bonfire Night is perfect and appropriate. Why, thank you, Fee in the shed. Great comment. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn Morastica. I'm She's just going to pop out and get these. <laughs> I'm just going to pop out and get my boots real quick because it's getting pretty thick around here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying my surname correctly. My husband is Balinese. Best wishes to you How all cool from Melbourne, Australia. I think that was for you, Mike. I think you're the only one that said it absolutely uh, correctly. John Zatowski in the house. Thin Mark is off the crackers. Yes, indeed. <laughs> no crackers allowed in this house. That's true. I literally, I had to get away from those crackers. That <laughs> was just not helping me at That's all. That's funny. The fudge isn't much helping the cause either. But oh, that's okay. thanks, that's John like... Satowski. That was him too that said that. It was. I know. I when he Mike, messaged yesterday. We got this. Oh fudge. my God, Uranus. The Uranus Fudge Factory <laughs> General Store. The best fudge comes from Uranus. We got this, and it was box. Um, Mike, it was boxes and boxes of fudge. Yeah, look. I know. Here. Well, he sent. You see he the... sent me. Uh, throat yeah, that's lozenges. too close, babe. That's oh. way too close. He sent me throat lozenges. Oh, oh nice. Did? Back like a few months ago. Nice. nice. Thank yeah. you for the super sticker, Tamara. We appreciate it. Cody Mack, hey all. I was curious what you might know about Nashville or literally no one ever there. Does Sea Org run it? Definitely no C's <laughs> at that CC. <laughs> no celebrities at that celebrity center. Yeah. Well, Aaron and I went by and visited that like, I guess that was like six or seven years ago or something maybe. When we were there for a convention in Nashville, oh. and it was there was a, a one of those VM yellow vans with a flat tire in the parking yeah. lot, <laughs> and maybe two other cars, and that was all. That was the wow. entirety of the population of the Celebrity Center Nashville. Nice. Wow. Here's the um, here's the Amazon bests. Oh, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> um, I'll keep going on the comments well, if while we, you fix if we, that. If we go like this, we yeah, can Yeah, right? It. Exactly. There you go. Okay, Donna Rose, can someone get a drone over the IES site for live reports? Oh, we'll I see. guarantee they have thought of that. I yeah. guarantee you. Yeah, yeah I'm sure you're too. Right. Tina Christensen, hi from Highlands Ranch. Love and admire all of you. Well, hello back, Highlands Ranch. Yes, indeed, our neighbor. Uh, tenacious Art Girl, I want to suggest SPTV starting fun and cool raffles to raise more money for y'all, like win lunch in Clearwater with an SPTV personality, etc. <laughs> nice thought. Well, we have a lot more coming on that. We've We've been slowly but surely gaining momentum over at the aftermath foundation we just added a, a, an amazing new auction platform so we'll see we'll f see what's on the horizon coming soon renee hale thank you for the super chat love you guys so much my first live and my first oh, wow. super chat amazing cool. we appreciate well, I hope you've it you've enjoyed it yes we certainly hope so thank you for being here with us today and here we go Free Xenu project of Farsec. Mike, I'm so glad you're doing better. It is so good to see you, Mark, and Claire back together again. You all do more to help people of the world in six months than Scientology has done in their entire existence. <laughs> yes, Thank that fun so fact much. is not lost on us. Believe you me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All righty. Melanie Kowek. Can you just see Leah being interviewed on the goldenrod carpet? What a hoot. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there you golden go. Goldenrod carpet. We yeah. need a goldenrod carpet now, guys. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? We've got a growing list of event, I event know. This requirements. Sounds, this sounds like a lot of work for me. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, no comment. Which, which all goes to play out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Free well, yeah, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Write that down, honey. Somebody that actually down. has to do it. Write that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, if you were still in OSA, what would you do about SPTV? Uh, throw up my hands in despair and walk Blow. out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's already, he just did it. He's done it. There you go. Good answer. Free Zenu project of Farsic. Flippant? 
flippant. Mark, I resent. I resemble that remark. I th you might have meant resent that remark. I'm not sure. That's, yeah, that's what you say. You yeah. Say, okay. Oh, I resemble gosh. that remark. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, you're really doing a good job with this. Mark. I am. I got it. So yeah. There you I go. It, okay. I literally have it all together. I'm yep. doing a great job. Denise Brown, <laughs> super sticker. Thank you so Thank much, you, Denise. Denise. Okay, here we Andy, go. Andy, fabulous. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. I'll just Need hide to make... this for a second. Okay. okay, so Mike is slaying it right now. So this is the right now Scientology best sellers, uh, best sellers on Amazon. Mike is number one, number two. Leah's number three, number four. Jenna is number five. Okay. Uh, oh, look at that. B Mark B B number G. six. And number seven is Dianetics, and that is the <laughs> paperback version. That Mike, is the first time that has been that high. Well, they the, must be doing something telling people to buy books. They're mm -hmm. putting out millions of dollars on Google Ads right now. Millions yeah. of dollars. Mike's book is number eight, and then the audio version of Dianetics is number nine, and then... I've never even heard of the number 10 one. Welcome to Transhuman. And then Bareface Messiah is number 11. And then Dianetics, uh, the hardback edition, is number 12. Wow, but, they're um, doing a big push on Dianetics to try and get it up on this bestseller list. And they <laughs> can't even get it to n into the top five. They I know. They can't. That's amazing. I can't believe, though, that's my audio book, too. Uh, plug for the uh, Blow for Good audio book. If you haven't read that, you can uh, you can get that on Audible. Yeah, um, and, and oh. we should factor in that we're not even selling your paperback and hardback on Amazon anymore either, by the way. So right. that's not even Oh, in that's the mix. true. That's why it's not even, those that's aren't why even it's on, not there. on there. Yeah. We're selling a ton of those, but we just sell them direct now because... Yep. Right. You know, Why Amazon's Amazon. just taking my money. Yeah. Um, but um, I'll let them take the money for the Audible. But, but just to, I just want to put in a plug here. Yeah. I just found out people asked me when I said that now they're the paperback edition, the trade paperback edition of my book is coming out in February and you can yeah. pre order it on Amazon already. And a lot of people ask me because it has a new afterword, which sort of updates everything over the last year. If that is going to be, if there's going to be a new audio book, and Simon and Schuster wrote to me this week and said, "Yes, we want to do a new edition of the audio book with the afterword now added to it." So nice. wow. there will be a new audio book coming out, uh, I guess, with the paperback. I don't know when I'm going to record it, but I'll do it soon. Nice. nice. That's awesome. good news. Great news. Andy, fabulous. Thank you for that, Andy. Need to make LRHP mats with his face on it and tongue sticking out to catch drops of pee. Make a great Christmas gift. Mmm, pee on mat. Okay, now listen, Andy, fabulous. I'm following your line of, your train of thought here, but let me throw this out to you. You can buy custom urinal cakes with someone's face on them and then you put those in the urinal so there's not a matter of some something dripping on it you're gonna get a good hard stream on that face. cake and um yeah and as, a, and as a mother of three boys i think we should recommend that it all goes in not, yes. not drops we shouldn't yeah. be promoting anything having to do with external <laughs> drops anyway i have researched i have researched this andy fabulous oh we have the same problem <laughs> And yeah. it was a toss up between Big problem. Davey. Now, listen, I'm telling you, I even have the name. I have it every. There was a Davy Cakes. It was Davy Doll or Davy Cakes. OK, now <laughs> you don't you can't put a Davy Cake on your desk and just leave it there because it's going to smell like, you know, Cisco Davy Cakes, but um, like a urinal cake. So we went with a Davy yeah. Doll, but um, we may do we may do a Davy Cake thing in the future but for now we got davy dolls thank you for that andy fabulous lisa m never in but fascinating and have so much admiration for all of you in sptv keep up keep please keep going love you guys thank hey, you lisa thank m we appreciate you. it we will wow lathanda is like um this might be really you're gonna roll. win the birthday game most super chats in one video <laughs> team claire guy fox day would be perfect masks on 
You could do a guy, you and Marilyn, oh, wait, missed, Kelly. And you can do whatever you want on the fifth. That's right. <laughs> babe, babe, you guys can have a Guy Fox marathon the day after, and everybody who loves it can be part of it. I'm not, I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just, it's not going to be the thing that we do when the event's happening. Uh, right. Jaded Neck Zero. Jaded Neck Zero. Okay. Uh, you are looking great, Mike. Um, heart. I hope you are heart. I hope you are feeling strong. We need you here to help fight the good fight against that teeny tiny Captain Keebler, Mickey Witch. Love and support all <laughs> of the SP fam. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very, you. very generous of you. Thank you very much for that. Free Xenu project uh, of Farsec. Um, can we do a fundraiser to buy all the books from all the ex Scientologists and send them all to Davy Puppet Boy? I, there's not really. Um, I don't know. Oh, you mean from the books from all the exes? Um, I guarantee you that they have copies of our books and they've studied them thoroughly. Um, and Davey, you know, when I was saying earlier that OSA has to transcribe this and report all these things up, they 100% have to do that. The fact that Mike is on a live, that is a notable thing like mike when mike wasn't doing lives it would be mike hasn't appeared in the live in so many days or you know and i that i have a theory on why those P pi showed up mike because you were you were kind of doing something else you were flying below the radar and they needed to know what's yeah. mike up to because he's not on sptv what's he doing and i think they were paranoid that you were you were doing some secret project and they uh they they needed to know I was. About it. well that they but they don't know <laughs> that <laughs> joe virus uh never in but bought dianetics for 50 cents at goodwill to keep it out of the wrong hands <laughs> i camp a lot so it makes for great kindling i tell you i have seen so many joe virus you're a goddamn genius yeah um well done joe the, virus the, thank you for helping the world Excuse my language. Sorry, I use the uh, Lord's name in vain. Um, but um, yes, you can do that. If you see something at a thrift store and it's fifty cents, just buy it to take it out of circulation. We don't need we don't know, need um, you know thrifters going. Sometimes there's a lot of kids these days that like to go to thrift stores and buy kind of cool old. Uh, you know, we don't want Macklemore to be the next celebrity Scientology. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, no. we don't want Macklemore <laughs> getting into Scientology. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. There, I, there's many schools of thought on Macklemore. We might give him. We might give him over. <laughs> Depends on <laughs> what do you think of Macklemore. He might be one. We might say, yeah, get on over there, Macklemore. Um, uh, oh, dude. Chris O C. Mark, for the love of God, put put put. put, put Please put this towards the Davy Cake Fund. No, oh, these just are coming in right now. Yes. Um, oh. um, yeah, I don't, I love the Davy Cake idea. It just, it only, uh, you know, analytics wise, YouTube's telling me it's not a financially responsible uh, thing to do because there's not a lot of people on here that are going to buy Davy Cakes. Um, but, um, you know. We did it, guys. We made it to we the got, end. We got to the Amazing. end. Amazing. Thanks to all the many people who joined us tonight. Don't forget to yep. subscribe and like at Mike Rinder and at Blown for Good. We so appreciate you all here and thank you for watching to the very end. And also, those of you who watched to the very end, you get a treat. Yeah, in our uh, final and, two minutes here, folks, just oh, as and a I, reminder. And I do have to duck out because I got to get ready for the next stream with Mitch. So I'm going to let you guys wrap this one up. Claire, make sure to play the outro um, yes. and do all the stuff that I normally do. Don't be a barbarian. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have and, I and ever been a barbarian? Those... Oh, my gosh. Come on. Now, no, folks. you're the least barbarian person I know, Claire. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> but, about now. So awesome. See yes. you later, guys. Thanks again for doing this Bye. with us. We appreciate Bye, it. Bye bye. Yes. And give me a minute here. Ah. Uh, I'm barbarian. so fired. I'm so fired. Oh my gosh. I'm freaking out here. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my god. The videos gosh. are on the brand. The video brand, should be on the brand. No, I'm looking for the outro. I don't have it. <laughs> It's, There's no outro. It's okay, Claire. Okay. The only well, person in the whole world that cares about this is Mark. Is Mark. 
I know. We won't okay. tell him. We won't tell him. We won't tell him, and he'll never go okay. back and watch it. It's our little secret. Amazing, but guys, I'll, I'll hit end stream. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Our little secret. <laughs>